think we are live here. I know this has a little bit of a delay, but um, if there's anybody in here listening, welcome. Um, about to open up Lightroom here in just a couple seconds and um, get to editing some photos. So let's open up Lightroom and um, let's see. All right, so got my coffee here. I think I got everything I need to start editing in just a couple minutes. Um, Lightroom is loading and we will get rolling here in just a minute. So everybody grab your coffees or sit back, relax, enjoy. And um, feel free to say hi in the chat if you're hanging out. All right, here we go. We just got Lightroom booted up. Let's see. And of course, as soon as I turn Lightroom on, my uh, computer starts heating up a little bit and all my fans turn on. Typical. Lightroom has to essentially chug through all of my memory, basically. All right, so I have Lightroom up here. I'm gonna make some minor adjustments and we will transition over to Adobe Lightroom. Alright, so I'm in Lightroom here, have this open, and I have a handful of, uh-oh, I have a handful of new photos that I haven't really shown off that much yet. Um, and by new, I mean these photos are about two years old right now. Um, all sorts of aircraft photos um, from a mission about two years ago in England, and really miss being in England so I thought these photos would be great um, to show off and do a little bit of editing I have I guess I have about 50 photos in here so I'll take my time we'll stream for a couple hours and whoever wants to drop by and you know say hi that would be absolutely awesome so let me just switch some stuff over real quick um, edit a couple things here. I'll make a couple posts just uh, saying that we are live to remind some people. Um, any stragglers that might be on Twitter or anything like that, we'll just check that out real quick. And we'll get started here in just about two minutes. Um, let's see. All right, well, let's get started here, doing some editing. All right, so we have our window open here, we have Lightroom open, and I think we are good to go. So um, let's see, I think I'm going to start, you know, right here at the beginning and if you want to or if you don't want to I think I'm gonna give a little bit of backstory to some of these images and just kinda um, do some basic edits some basic toning um, and developing and you know we'll just see what happens here so let's get started with this shot right here um, grab some coffee first um, let's see so this is or was shot in England in the UK um, at a Royal Air Force base and this is a B-52 Stratofortress um, big bomber um, it is a known as a heavy bomber because these things are huge and they can carry like 70,000 pounds worth of bombs um, 
And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was shot on the Nikon D5. I can do a quick check, I think. Let's see. Yeah, it's not telling me there, but a little cheat you can use if you don't remember what it was shot on. Um, you can go down to, not calibration, uh, lens correction, and if you hit this right here, you can see Nikon. And sometimes it'll show you the lens it was shot on, 70 to 200. Yeah, this is more for the lens, my mistake. Um, so kind of figure out what the lens was, if it wasn't up here in your metadata, but I see it right there in my metadata, but I am about I'm about 99% sure this was, um, oops, I'm just going to change over some of these viewers so I can see uh, basically who's in the chat right now. All right, let's get back to Lightroom. So um, I apologize if I get a little bit sidetracked. Um, and I guess my dog is barking now. Hey, shh, be quiet. All right, sorry for that. So let's get back to um, doing some editing. So I just kind of straighten this out. I cropped it. Um, the one thing that was difficult, um, or always difficult about photographing these bombers, um, and especially wide aircraft in general, there's always an issue with um, how wide they are. And it essentially, it makes your compositions uh, really wide and you're kind of stuck with wide compositions so one thing that I like to do is usually crop the image pretty wide so a 16 by 9 or you know a 2 by 1 1 by 2 sometimes that looks pretty good um, but you are kind of stuck with that wide crop or wide composition to make it look good so just for fun I usually click the auto button just to see what it does um, that actually doesn't look too bad. That's pretty close to what I'll be doing. Um, can it backslash for the before and the after? Um, it was a little bit hot. You could see in the histogram before. Um, so bring down that exposure about a stop. I'll bring it down a little bit less than what the auto wanted, but I'm gonna get right in here it is a tiny bit grainy. My ISO was 640. The D5 was pretty decent in low light, but um, I did have issues every now and then with it getting a little bit grainy, especially when I was trying to bring the shadows back up. It looks like a lot of the detail here in the shadows just kind of got lost in the grain, which is a little bit disappointing, especially when the D5 is what, like a $6,000 camera or something like that. So, um, that happens, nothing you can do about it. Um, it is, uh, was a little bit grainy, but that's okay. We can go in, we can do some noise reduction, we can do a whole bunch of other things. Bring the contrast up. I want this to be a nice contrasty image. And as you can see, as I'm bringing the contrast up, I can actually see quite a bit of vignetting going on. So if you see, if I really turn that up, watch the corners of the screen, and you can see that vignette kind of come in around the edge that's not bad um, but it is noticeable I will end up adding a little bit of my own vignette later on I think um, just to bring your eye a little more towards the center and I do want the aircraft to be offset a little bit I don't want it exactly in the center I want some of it more towards the right hand side so that I have some nice leading space here and then these whatever these are weather towers radar towers kind of balance it out and I think that looks pretty nice there um, so I'll leave the crop there um, I don't like how the auto turned up these shadows so let's turn those down a touch that looks a little bit better and might have gotten rid of eh, a tiny bit of the noise but it's still pretty prevalent Let's turn up our contrast a bit more and then I'm really surprised again that there's so much noise when um, we brought down the exposure a stop so let's bring down our black values of our histogram and if you guys don't know this this is a kind of cool trick you can do with your histogram you can actually click 
and drag in your histogram to change your exposure, which is pretty neat. So if I wanted to select right here, and you can see what what they are right there, my highlights, my white values, my general overall exposure, my shadows, and then obviously my black values right there. And then these little arrows will show you if you're clipping or not. So if I was clipping in my white values, you can see it turns red right there when I have this little arrow on and off. Let's see where my clipping is. We'll put that back to zero. And then we can see the same thing happens if I turn on you know, my clipping warning right there and I turn down my exposure. You can see everything turns blue. And that's basically just telling me all this data is pure black and it is just lost. It's gone. Gone forever. So we'll find a nice, you know, happy median value there. Turn up my highlights a touch. Turn up my whites a bit because remember before it was very bright and fog makes your image very bright and I don't really want to lose that. So I'm going to put my exposure, whoops, we will do a negative 0.8. Let's try that. I don't want to lose, yeah, we are bringing that grain back a little bit there, but you know, I want my exposure to look proper. That's uh, that's the big thing right there. Clarity is something I usually avoid, but if I do use clarity, I'll probably never go over like 25 tops just to make some of the details a little more punchy. Now here's where the dehaze tool really comes into use, but I don't want to go too far. Oh, yep, you can even see I'm clipping some of my black values and even some of my highlights right there. I like having that on and just to make sure that I'm not really overcooking my image. Hey, what's up? Um, welcome to the live stream. Um, I got really distracted by editing here, so welcome. Um, B50 and poor photographer, glad to have you guys here. Um, but yeah, here is, you can see we really clipped those values there, and this is definitely over edited, overcooked. And I love the dehaze tool, but sometimes haze is really the cool part of the image. Um, especially, you know, if you're shooting on a foggy day or something like that, um, that's half the fun of the image. So, um, I rarely use dehaze on a foggy day. It just kind of mushes up your image, but you know, it's always fun to add a little bit of that mid-tone contrast, but yeah, I'm probably not going to go over 20. I think 20 looks good. So again, let's hit backslash in Lightroom. And we'll just take a look at our before and our after. Now, the only thing I'm not liking with our edit right now, you can see on this far left side, um, that vignette is getting a little bit heavy. And um, it might be hard to see in the stream, but I'm just not a fan of how it looks. I'm trying to see if I can, I can see it a little bit in the live stream um, video, even though the video is a little bit um, not the best quality. But... Again, I'm starting to see that, and clarity will bring out that vignette a lot more, and dehaze will also, you know, really emphasize that vignette. And the reason it's not coming up on this side is because we cropped it out over here. But otherwise, you know, yeah, you can see that really heavy vignette from my 70 to 200 millimeter lens. So maybe I'll even bring this edge of the frame in a touch. All right. Um, and you guys, if you're watching and have any questions, feel free to, you know, ask any questions you might have. I'll be live streaming here probably for, you know, a couple hours. I don't have much to do tonight. Um, so ask any questions you might have and I will, you know, try my best to answer. Um, now one thing I can see, and you can probably see this in the live stream too, see these little red dots. We still have our clipping on, um, with our clipping warning for our highlights. So, I'm okay with lights clipping. Um, that doesn't really bother me much. Lights should be bright for the most part, as long as they're not, you know, super horrible looking, but it's a foggy day and they are very bright lights. What I can do is play with my highlights a bit and play with my whites a bit. Whoa. But I think you can see these tiny little dots down in the corner of my histogram. 
I think those white values are pretty much clipped, and I'm okay with that. Um, again, they're so small, it doesn't really bother me that those tiny little highlights are clipped. I am okay with that. Um, so let's scroll down. Here we've done our basic editing. I think our white balance looks pretty good. Um, if anything, I would just cool it down a touch. I really wouldn't want a foggy image to get um, too warm. I think that would be a little bit strange. Um, so we have done our basic edits. Let's try some color profiles and you know, just see what we come up with. Uh, we don't want to use flat. Let's see what vivid looks like. Vivid looks okay. Let's try standard. What's the difference between standard and Adobe Color? Looks like Adobe Color has a little more contrast. Landscape has a little more saturation. Portrait takes away some of the saturation. Which portrait looks pretty good. Let's go between portrait and standard. Portrait's a little more contrasty than standard. I like this Adobe Portrait Profile. I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's see what other profiles we have in here. We'll just take a look real quick. Make these a little bit smaller. Let's see, we have Adobe Neutral. Let's try, what does camera portrait look like? Oh, nothing crazy, camera vivid. Let's see if these are the same, camera vivid and Adobe vivid. No, oh, nope, Adobe is a little bit more intense. So I'm not going to mess with those too much. Um, and then you can turn these on and off. You can see with the stars here, if you use Adobe Lightroom to edit, um, you can make these your favorites. And you can see my favorites tab here. So when I put a star by it, it turns it into a favorite. And that way, if I close my list, it shows up right here in my favorites. And I don't have to click those little four boxes to actually really get into it and you know go through all of those profiles. But I think Adobe Vivid looks pretty good. Let's leave that the way it is. Actually, I think we went with Portrait, didn't we? Adobe Portrait. Let's do that one. I'm going to add a little bit more contrast. Let's try 55. That looks pretty good. And the next thing I want to do before I go any further, I think I'm going to go and probably try some noise reduction. Um, I think some noise reduction would look good. And this photo can definitely um, can definitely use it, I think. So let's give that a check. It's in our detail tab right here. And you can see in our detail tab, it might be difficult in the video, but this is quite the noisy image. I had to have it, the ISO cranked up quite a bit. It was a very dark and gloomy England day, as you can see. Um, England had quite a few rainy days when I was there for this mission. So I'm going to turn up our sharpening a bit, turn up our detail so you can see some of the details in the jet, and I'm also going to turn up the masking. I'm going to hold Alt, and by holding Alt, you can actually, you know, maximize or minimize what is being sharpened in the image. So um, the white parts are being sharpened, and the black parts are not being sharpened. So it kind of looks like a funky neon image. Uh, like this, kind of cool, but it essentially narrows the sharpening threshold down to just the edges of the image. So turn down the sharpening to just the edges, turn down this sharpening a little bit. And let's get into some noise reduction. So let's turn noise reduction up to, let's try 15, 16, about there. That looks okay. Um, I'm going to hold Alt to turn the image black and white. And then I'll move my noise reduction slider. If I bring it up to 100%, that usually doesn't look good. Um, ooh, yeah, that looks gross. You can see that made it very flat. And it almost looks like a painting. What would that look like if I let go of Alt and that color comes back? Yeah, that is a very mushy photo. If I was trying to make this look like a painting, that would be a good job. Or noise reduction at 100 would do a good job doing that. Let's find a happy medium somewhere in there. 
I'm going to turn it down to 30. Wait for details to come back. That's a little bit better. Um, and then I'm going to turn the color noise down a touch. Um, I've noticed that if your color noise reduction is too high, if it's up, you know, above you know, 10 or 12, actually turn it down to 10. It might even go lower, but if it's too high, it just starts making the details of your image very mushy and you start losing a lot of detail in your shot. So I don't want to do that. Um, just reminded myself that the horizon of this looks a little bit tilted. So I'm going to hit Control or Command, try and straighten out that horizon a bit. That looks a little bit better. As you can see, I just get on some little side tangents sometimes um, with little things, and I just kind of, I like to fix things as they pop up so I don't forget about them. Um, we can play with some split toning a little bit. Maybe we warm up our highlights a touch, add some yellows, some orange. Maybe we cool down the highlights and cool down that fog. That looks kind of neat, but I rarely rarely play with split toning it's just um it's a very unique effect i guess um but yeah split toning is something it has to be very intentional and you have to be kind of going for a certain look um but yeah um split toning is something i again very rarely use oh let's see what else we can do we do need to do some lens correction. I want to correct some of this vignetting around the edge. So let's see if I can turn that up again. Yep, that looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, you can see there without any um, vignette correction. That's what it looks like. And then we'll turn it up, get rid of it. Because I want to get rid of the camera's vignette and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add my own vignette down here in the effects tab in Lightroom. You can see I'm going to make this pretty strong just so I can see it right now. So I can essentially see what I'm working with and then I will, after I make my vignette edits, I will um, back off the amount. in the amount slider and this is just a good way like sometimes I'll even crank it to you know a hundred percent just so I can kind of see what's going on versus if I'm only playing with you know seven percent or even like twenty percent it's really difficult to see and that's where I'll eventually back off to but I want to do my vignette editing so that I can see it and then I can turn it down so yeah, let's make this a little more round. Move that midpoint towards the center. Looks good. Turn the highlights up so it affects the sky a little bit less. And then now I will turn my vignette down now that that looks good. Not too shabby. I'm still seeing it quite a bit up in the sky. I don't like that. Turn the highlights up a little bit more. Maybe we'll play with our midpoint. Now, as you can see, I'm just uh, I'm not liking the way this vignette is turning out right now. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll do like a reverse kind of a white vignette. Brighten up the edges. It actually looks kind of neat. Let's turn that on and off, see what it looks like. Yeah, maybe I'm not a fan of that. So, um, just reply to some people in this live stream chat real quick. Um, I know some people don't have their audio on, so that might make this a little difficult to listen to. Let's um, take a look at... Uh, I'm just going to take a look at Twitter real quick, make sure I didn't miss any, miss any messages. But then we will um, get back here in just a second to our live stream. So, all right, let's get Lightroom open again. 
Um, my computer's chugging a little bit. Um, my MacBook is a little bit older. I think it's a 2015. And um, every year, it doesn't feel like it's getting older, but I know every year my MacBook's getting older, which stinks, but oh well, not much I can do about it except, you know, buy another MacBook in the future, and um, I probably will be doing that pretty soon. So I think this image, I think it looks all right. Um, when I initially edited this image for the first time, this is pretty close to what I came up with, and I think the final published image um, looks quite similar to this. And again, I always like to, you know, bounce around, and I'll come back to, you know, the tone curve. I want to add a touch more contrast, bring down those shadows a bit. My shadows are looking a little bit mushy, and I'm not liking that. I double click to delete those points. And let's go back. I'm going to turn down these black values even more. Negative 75. Turn up our contrast to 65. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's looking a little bit better. Um, but yeah, you guys, um, I'm not sure if you're listening to the audio or not. Um, if I don't hear anything from you, I'll just reply in the chat thing here. But feel free, ask any questions you want. Um, just say hi, or, you know, it doesn't have to be on topic. Um, I love just, you know, hanging out and chatting for a little bit. So I am, you know, down for that. So um, I think that photo looks pretty decent. Um, the next one is quite similar. Um, looks like I zoomed in here a little bit. Um, this one was... Doo, 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 doo. Oh, they were both 200 millimeters. Uh, I guess the plane had just passed this little weather tower or radar tower, and it was just closer to me. So let's try... Um, here's a fun little trick. If I have my first photo selected, and then I control select or shift select. I think shift select works as well. Let's see if I sh shift select. Yep, I can shift select my next photo that I want to have the same edit. And then I can just click the sync button right here. And I can sync all the settings I want to transfer over from the image one over to image two. So I can just hit synchronize. And then you can see my edit will come on over and be pasted onto this image and you can see it looks a little bit heavy-handed again um, let's start out by cropping I'll do a two to one crop again I think I'll leave this one just a little bit wider I like that number two right there which if you guys don't know um, these mark the distance of the runway. So when you're landing, or when the pilots are landing, they know how much runway they have left. Landing or taking off, I guess. Um, so that looks good. I think I might have done a little bit of a panning shot with this. I can see the ground is blurred, and the jet is pretty darn sharp. Um, but again, this vignette over here on the left-hand side that's really bothering me again. So I'm going to go through and actually just for fun, let's um, see what black and white looks like. Um, that's kind of neat. I'm not sure if I like it or not. Maybe we'll come back to that and try it again later, but excuse me. Um, but yeah, sync really does help a lot. Um, saves a lot of time. So let's say I wanted to, you know, select this photo and I wanted to shift select all of these photos I can hit sync and select a bunch of photos and then I can sync all of those photos up without having to deal with copying and pasting every single edit or um, you know editing every photo individually which is a total pain so what I'm thinking I think part of my problem with this particular image might be the color profile I'm using I'm gonna try a little bit flatter of a profile. Let's try what does Adobe Neutral look like? That's a little bit better. Maybe that was some of the issue with my noise as well. Uh, let's let the image load here. Full res. Yeah, this is 
this image is a little bit noisy. It's also a little bit blurry, I'm noticing. Um, let's see, my shutter speed was a 200th of a second. This plane was probably moving, you know, 200 miles an hour, and I was on a 200 millimeter lens. So that explains, and I was up in the aircraft tower, the control tower. So um, this is a little bit blurry. I probably wouldn't publish this one. Um, I probably would, you know, stick more so with this one. This one was nice and sharp. Again, we did have some noise from the high ISO, but, you know, I was panning. You can see I was panning with the aircraft a little bit. These lines are blurred just a touch. And some of the grass is blurred. Some of the tower is blurred, but the aircraft is nice and sharp. Um, so let's move on to another image here. And this was a different jet that was coming in, I believe, a second one. Um, it's a little bit hard to see in the fog there. So let's start off with a, let's see, what is black and white? Black and white might actually eventually look kind of cool on this photo. I'm not sure, but um, let's go through. We'll do some processing to this photo and see what it looks like. So again, we have a very you know wide horizon here. We have a wide aircraft, so I'm probably going to go with something close to a 16 by 9 crop. Check out what that looks like. Let's check out some of the details in this photo. You can see there's some construction going on. It looks like there's a bird or something right there, but there's also a road you can see right behind the outer fence of this Air Force Base, Royal Air Force Base in the UK. Um, and you can see some folks back here um, standing right there, and the cars parked. They were actually photographing the jet from the outside of the base, and I was obviously on the inside of the base, but that's pretty neat. You can see all these, they're on their ladders right here, checking out the aircraft as it's landing. Um, and I'm not sure if anyone here is uh, familiar with the aircraft uh, tail spotting community. Um, it goes around essentially just photographs different airplanes and kind of tracks which airplanes they photographed and stuff like that. It's kind of neat. Um, but I got to meet some of those guys and gals and hang out with them a little bit and they're pretty cool people. So um, just going to add some contrast to this image a touch in there. Um, sorry, I'm just going to check some text messages real quick. Just got to kind of do that regularly. Now you can see again, this image was a little bit grainy. It is because of the fog. And again, my ISO is 640-ish. Let's turn up our vibrance a touch just to get some more of this color in the bottom. And again, we can try dehaze to bring out some of the details, but I am never a huge fan of what it does. If an image is going to be foggy and taken, you know, on a foggy day, you know, just leave it foggy sometimes. Um, let's see what clarity does. I don't like clarity a lot because clarity actually, it feels like it turns the saturation down in the image. So look at that. Pay attention to some of these oranges right here. Let's try a little experiment. Everything looks like, you know, very green and orange, very saturated. Um, but if I turn clarity up, everything looks just, you know, dull and brown and dead. So... That's kind of a, it's kind of a byproduct of clarity I've noticed. Um, so when you do turn up your clarity, then you have to turn up your saturation, and your image just starts, you know, looking a little bit funky. And it's hard to compensate for the mess that clarity makes sometimes. So I'll turn it up a little bit. Um, again, I'm not telling you not to use clarity, but maybe I'll set these at 10. And then texture is another one you got to be careful with. It does some interesting sharpening um, all of these tools you know not everything is a magical fix in Lightroom and photo editing in general so you know if you want your image super sharp you can do that but you know you're gonna bring back the noise I want my image super you know contrasty if I turn all my sliders up oh god that looks bad but I'm kind of exaggerating to make a point here. You can turn your sliders up quite a bit, you know, to try and make it good and try and make it, you know, contrasty and stuff like that. 
but all you're really going to do is bring out noise, bring out other artifacts, and it's not going to look great. So let's bring these back to where they were. And let's do, let's try fives across the board here. Just five for everybody. That looks decent. There's honestly, this kind of photo, there's not much more I can do with it just because of, you know, I'm limited because it was a little bit foggy. And if I really decided to, you know, crop in and do a real hardcore crop, you know, maybe do this. Let's see. Do something like that. That's not bad. We kind of got rid of all these distracting details. I want to go right down to the edge of this road right here. Let's see. Maybe instead of a 16 by 9, maybe we can pull off a 2 by 3. Let's try that. Or heck, if we could uh, get really crazy, go with a vertical. Let's see how that looks. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I also don't hate it. I would do a wider vertical, like a 4x3, maybe a 4x5. Let's try that. I do like having those lights in the bottom. And again, giving my aircraft some room over here to move just a little bit. Actually, that's not too bad. Again, I don't hate it. That's not terrible. Um, let's scroll down here. Before we go, this image feels a little bit green. Let's bring up our magenta and our white balance a little bit. Maybe we'll try and warm this up. Oh, that's too much. Let's try, try a cloudy white balance preset. Ooh, that looks bad. Looks real bad. Shade? Nope, that looks bad. Daylight, let's try that one. And daylight might be the best we get. It is looking a little bit hot on the magenta side. Let's go from 10 to 6. That's better. Okay, I like that one. Um, I think that looks decent. Let's play around with our noise reduction and our sharpening and all that detail stuff down here in our detail tab. Take my selector. Go right above the jet right there. I think that looks pretty cool. All right there, turn up my sharpening a touch. You can see, again, if I want to have a sharp image, sometimes I'm going to have to, you know, deal with that noise. Um, just a part of the game that we're playing here. Um, just kind of how photography works. So I'm really going to turn up that masking so it's only sharpening the details that I want it to sharpen. Let's... Turn detail down a bit. That's way too sharp. I'm just going to zoom in here on our plane at 100% on our jet right here. And we will start playing with our noise reduction a touch. And we're going to turn our contrast up a bit. Uh, let's see. Let's see what 100 does. And we'll see what zero does. Just kind of playing around with the tools here. Um, a lot of sliders act different depending on, you know, exactly what image you're working with. So, you know, sharpening or noise reduction may work one way with one image and work slightly different with another image. You can see her here around the edges. I have some colored pixels that are starting to pop up. So. I will bring up that color noise a touch, and I'm going to bring up our luminance noise a bit more to 20. And I think it's probably going to look pretty good, and I think we're going to stick with that. Um, it's going to take a split second there to load. Um, cool, we got four viewers. Um, again, if anybody's new here, feel free just to say hi in our little... Um, live chat over here on the right hand side um, or you know ask me any questions that you want to so I think that image is good for what we're gonna get I could really do some retouching and some noise reduction in Photoshop but you know for this being published on the web say Instagram at you know 1350 by 1080 pixels I think this would be pretty good um, let's try and I'm going to sync some settings again, so I'm going to hit my first image, 
and then command select these two images right here and let's try syncing our settings because I'm I've been doing very similar sharpening and some other things so ooh, those look a little bit dark um, so this was yep this was after the jet had landed um, and its little shoot came out here and back to slow it down and this did come out pretty dark I remember the image was not this dark so let's actually hit that auto button see what Lightroom gives us that's not bad it looks a little bit mushy um, how do our details look? Yeah, we got a little bit of grain, but it looks like it's halfway sharp, not too bad. I'm gonna turn up the exposure a bit. Let's try one. That looks a little bit better. Let's go ahead and crop and straighten this image. Let's try a 16 by nine again. I just wanna crop off this little road that was right there and center up the plane a little bit enter I think that looks pretty darn good um, yeah I like that you can see the lights in this one kind of guiding the jet to the end of the runway I think that looks pretty neat what else can we do to this image to make it look better I might bring up our vibrance a bit maybe our saturation a touch I never want to go too hard with that um, bring up our white balance hmm Always good to have a nice contrasty image. Yeah, that looks good. Much better. And let's take a look at our before and our after. We really just made everything kind of pop. And we did all of that while we preserved, you know, the detail or lack of detail, I guess, in our um, fog here. I really love that you kind of have these layers. You have the grass here. You have the jet. You have this first layer of trees, and then you have a farther back kind of layer of trees here, um, which is obscured by the clouds and the fog. And I just really enjoy that. I love having an image that has lots of layers. Sometimes you have control over that, sometimes you don't. But um, I think that is um, definitely something that you know adds depth and adds interest to your photo when you have those layers. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's sync up this next photo right here hit synchronize and we've already edited a similar one I think these two were very similar that I brought in so let's check them out as it loads yep this is just you know same jet a little bit farther down the runway Wait for this to load. Make sure it's nice and sharp before we even start editing. Yep, that looks pretty darn sharp. And that edit looks decent to me. It looks pretty good. Um, again, we'll go for one of those super wide crops. Crop into, go the edge right there of the wing. Let's try this. Or maybe... Maybe we lose a little bit of that sky and show off some of the grass. Hmm. I'm not sure if I like that better or if I like showing more of the foggy sky. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add a little more contrast. And I'll do that by turning the exposure down a hint, turning my contrast up a touch. And then maybe we'll go and we will play with our tone curve a bit. All right, bring up some of those highlights. That looks good. Bring down some of those shadows. That looks pretty good. Again, we don't want our shadows to get too mushy down here in the belly of the aircraft or get lost down there. So we won't go too heavy handed with those edits, but Let's take a look again at the before. Very flat, very foggy, um, a very raw looking image. Um, and then just added some very simple pop and some contrast to it. So foggy images, again, are always difficult to edit and it comes down to um, really playing with, um, just kind of playing with everything, playing with your settings, seeing what happens when you 
you know, bring down your blacks a little bit, bring up your clarity, play with your, you know, everything, your contrast, your exposure. Um, foggy images are not easy to take and they're not easy to make look good. So when you do make a image look good that was taken on a foggy day, be, uh, be proud of yourself because they are not easy. So let's move on. Here is a nice sunset image. I believe it was one of these aircraft that had landed. We'll start off here with a crop. Um, bring it in just a bit. Uh, the main thing I want to focus on is that tail. So I'll crop in here just a bit. And I like having the tail just off center. It makes the composition look nice. Now we can go in here, and I'm going to warm this image up a bit because it was sunset. And some of those magenta tones, and it's looking a little bit hot right here. We're going to have to figure out a way to make the tail have some contrast with the sky. So let's play with some sliders, see what we get. Maybe turn down the, ex the exposure a little bit, about a half stop and turn up our contrast. There we go, we're starting to get some contrast here in the belly of the jet. But I don't want to lose all that detail down there, so I'll bring just a little bit back with our shadows right here, about 15. And then add some contrast with our blacks and our white values right there. So that looks pretty good. Um, add a little bit of vibrance about 20 or so and then let's just do a quick check hit that backslash see the before see the after i am really liking where this is going so far and i'm just going to play with these clarity sliders and texture sliders we'll see what happens Ooh, that looked good i don't want to go too far let's try 25 for clarity that looked pretty decent um and texture, I kind of know what texture is going to do. It's going to make some of these rivets and stuff pop. So let's try a bit of texture. Let's, that was way too much. Let's try like 10. I think 10 looks good. Just to bring out some of these grungy details. And as usual, I notice my horizon is a little bit crooked as we're editing. Whoops. There we go. Again, there's our before. And there is our after. I like kind of, sometimes I tap this pretty quick and just kind of look around at different parts of the image. Uh, maybe I'll look at the top of the tail up here and I'll focus on that and go before and after. Maybe I'll look over here at this other layer down here, this tree line layer, and go before and after. Um, and then maybe I will look at the lettering, the rivets, the texture here, and just, you know, go, there's my edit. There's my before, there's my after. I think that looks pretty good. And we brought out some of these orangey, um, orangey orange tones, some warmth here in the tail, and I think that looks good. Um, I even turned up my white balance to be a little bit warmer, so you can really tell it's a sunset, a nice contrasty sunset. Um, and speaking of contrast, I'm gonna turn my contrast up quite a bit to 40. Yeah, that looks good. I'm liking how this is looking. Um, and then in Lightroom, sometimes these are the only two tabs I will touch right here is our basic tab and our detail tab. Because if you're in a you know extreme rush and you have to and you have to edit photos very quickly, um, these are really the two tabs you're gonna go between. And let's say I'm even more limited on time, maybe I only get into the basic tab right there. So um, just one thing to think about, sometimes you don't have hours upon hours to edit a photo. Um, sometimes in my line of work, I may have you know a minute or less to edit a photo. Maybe I have 30 seconds to get a photo edited um, and it has to get done now. Um, and while I was talking, you can see here, I opened our basic tab up again. I noticed there are some kind of areas that are turning into hot spots there excuse me and then this little you know radar bump right here so i'm going to turn down our highlights a hint but i think this little strip here might be lost but that's okay again it was direct sunlight 
on a very shiny piece of the aircraft. I think I'm okay with that. Oh, man. I'm tired. Sorry. Um, but yeah, that is, um, that's okay. Again, um, some people, everybody shoots images different. Some people will have, and I'm going to say this, um, I don't agree with, with this uh, train of thought, but some people will expose for the highlights to an extreme degree. Um, where you can see, I did expose for the highlights. This, you know, giant reflective, you know, metal aircraft was very, very bright with direct um, setting sun coming directly at it. Um, and you can see the tail of this aircraft was very bright. Um, brought my exposure down to 320. Um, I was shooting at a thousandth of a second for my shutter speed. Um, and my f-stop was 6.3. So I did expose for these main highlights. Um, but some people, you'll start to see expose for all of the highlights. They don't want any of their highlights clipped. So to expose for all of my highlights, I would have had to have shot this, you know, three stops under um, just to get the detail. <clears throat> and then I would have had to bring this, you know, way back up in, um, excuse me, in Lightroom. And that would have brought a whole bunch of noise just to save these tiny little highlights that don't bother me if they're lost. Um, so, you know, it's always a balance of how much you want to underexpose because remember, let's watch. Yeah, we've already lost, you know, all this detail here in the wheels. And if I would have underexposed three stops, you know, just to save... Let's make sure we're actually saving those highlights. Yep. Turn the clipping on. Well, again, you know, just that tiny bit of our image is clipped right there and maybe some whites, which I'm okay with. Am I really okay with, again, this come back, comes back to what I was saying before about balance. When you have one thing, sometimes you're losing something else. Um, so look how much just detail I would have lost in the aircraft if I would have, you know, exposed for all of the highlights. So it's kind of that trade-off. Um, let's try and, you know, underexpose this image a little bit more in the edit and just really bring out the sky and this tail. So let's keep playing with that, actually. I'm going a little experimental here. Again, I don't want to lose all of our shadow detail. I'm okay with a little bit here, but as we start getting towards the belly, we don't want this to turn into just a mush. Um, a mush is not good. And by that, I mean just, you know, losing a lot of detail and you can't tell, you know, what's what. Everything is just a mush. So I'm going to bring this crop a tiny bit wider just to see a little bit more here. I'm okay seeing this little... Um, you know, bomb rack right there. That's okay with me. Um, bring up my whites a touch more. Yeah, that's starting to look good. Start playing with maybe our highlights. So I'm using my highlights to bring down the sky, and I'm using my whites to bring up the tail. And that's just kind of it's a nice balance in everything in photography. For the most part, is about having a nicely balanced image. So um, I think we're about 90% done with this one. Let's take a look at the before. Again, that's backslash. A very bright image, probably how I saw it, but how I want to interpret this image is, you know, really emphasizing the contrast of the sunset. Let's see what dehaze does. Ooh, dehaze looks nice. Dehaze brings back the blue of the sky and the purple of the clouds that I saw in real life, but kind of didn't translate very well. I'm going to turn my clarity. I'm going to play with my clarity and see what happens. Um, I think it was a bit high to begin with. It looks good. And you can see I'm having some issues here, um, kind of a black glow. And I am getting some chromatic aberration there that we will fix in just a minute here. Um, 
we'll go down to you know our detail tab and our lens correction tab and we will fix that in just a hot second I'm gonna play with some more of that sky um, if I get it too dark that doesn't look natural does it so and it's again playing with that you know creative artistic license versus you know what actually looks good so I think we're kind of looking pretty darn good uh, the horizon just keeps looking crooked to me so I keep going back because while the horizon is straight just because you know the aircraft was kind of on an angle away from the camera it looks like it kind of tilts down a little bit <clears throat> excuse me as it goes from you know the right to the left it goes down so it just it's playing with my eye a little bit but I think that looks pretty good um, again I'm gonna play with how much detail do I want in the shadows I don't want too much don't want to look unnatural let's play with our sharpening this is a pretty darn sharp image um, again we're not dealing with the fog here so that's that's helping me out a lot just do some minor sharpening minor detail and then do a little bit masking so we're not getting a bunch of noise in the sky and then maybe I'll do noise reduction of you know five and we'll check it out up here just to make sure that we're not getting any crazy noise or anything, you know, unnecessary noise going on in the clouds. Um, that looks pretty good. Not too noisy. I could definitely get a decent quality print out of that. Um, and again, you guys, feel free to ask me any sort of questions. Give me any suggestions. You can feel free to tell me if my images suck. It won't hurt my feelings that bad. Um, but let's do some correction right here so we're going to take a look and see in our details we were getting some especially down here we could see some chromatic aberration so you could see on i believe this is our horizontal axis and our vertical axis or so horizontal axis we're getting some green chromatic aberration and let's try the removal and you should see that disappear as soon as my pinwheel of death goes away it did a little bit but I will have to do some manual. Oh, that did fix it as soon as it loaded. Boom, chromatic aberration is gone. So it took a second for it to load. Let's see what with and without the profile corrections. My ground got a bit brighter, so maybe I'll bring some of that vignetting back and turn the correction down a little bit. That looks good. And let's try some of our own vignetting adding a little bit of our own vignette to this image again go overkill at first and then bring it back and then let's try a vignette of like five or excuse me that would be a negative five that looks decent turn up our highlights let's see turn that on and off maybe I need to bring in my midpoint a bit there we go let's try to turn this up to 10 and let's try turn that on and off whoops I keep messing this up I meant to do negative 10 there we go so let's turn that on and then off so what do you guys think I really think it brings your eye towards the center here but it does darken up the sky quite a bit they're almost two different looks maybe I'll try go back to negative five I think negative ten was just too much now let's turn that off and turn it back on uh, yeah I think I like that a little bit better the five was a little bit better so I apologize if we're getting some noise um, from my laptop I might slow down a second um, use this as a second to um, answer any questions that you might have um, regarding any of these photos any photo editing camera questions gear questions you know anything feel free to ask um, I am cool with answering basically anything so um, again 
do not hesitate to drop me a question down in the chat. So I think this image is done. Next, we're going to start working. Um, I will let my laptop cool down a little bit, but we got some silhouettes here to edit. I was kind of do kind of a preview of some shots we're going to be editing. We got some cool jet trails. Um, more jet trail silhouettes. Some jets in the clouds. We will, a little bit later, do some long exposure edits. And I have some more long exposures you guys might like here at the end. Um, more long exposures of the same bomber. Um, a quick double exposure that I took that I want to edit. Um, just some neat shots coming up here. Got another double exposure right here. We got some more foggy, cloudy, these images. I've edited one of these before and it turned out really cool. So can't wait to edit that one. Here's one that I was messing with a little bit. Just kind of the windows of the aircraft. Um, then we have some nice sunset, super wide angle and some sunset silhouettes. I'm really excited to edit these ones too and kind of just see what happens with those. So we are about five, six, seven images in. We're about to edit these um, uh, sunset silhouettes. I think these can look really cool if we do it right. Um, but I'm just going to give my computer a second here to kind of cool down and catch up and it's chugging just a little bit. And I'm sure it's getting probably hard to hear me um, over the noise from the laptop. So let's, um, we can take a break for a second if you guys want, kind of do like a quick pause um, and pause here just for a second. Again, chance to ask any questions, kind of take an intermission, um, adjust my laptop camera a little bit. I'm gonna take a drink of coffee real quick. Um, really needed that. My throat was getting a little bit sore from doing all this talking. I'm gonna adjust my um, little light that I got going on here. It's a little bit bright in my face as I'm trying to edit. Hopefully you guys can see me okay. I think that's a little bit better. Okay, again, I'm just gonna let my laptop cool down a little bit. typing away here a little bit. Um, cool, we've been going for about an hour so far. Um, I will edit until, you know, I pass out and I get, you know, way too tired to edit. But um, feeling good, I'm feeling a little bit tired, but I got my coffee going. My coffee is what I need to uh, survive. Um, if you know anything about me, I love my coffee. Um, maybe while my computer's uh, cooling down a little bit, I can tell you a little bit more about you know my trip to England, and I most definitely um, survived on a lot of coffee. Um, this wasn't the coffee cup that I brought with me to that deployment, but um, should I be in the background while I cook? <laughs> nice to see you, Ryan. Um, good having you here. I'm uh, just talking a little bit about um, a deployment that I went on, um, but yeah, that's awesome. Um, so streaming, are you watching my stream in the background or are you watching my stream while doing your own stream while also cooking? That's a, that's a dangerous mix right there. Also, what are you cooking? I'm very curious. I made some uh, chicken and rice for dinner tonight. Threw some chicken in the crock pot, threw some rice in the microwave and kind of made a taco salad with some salsa and some good stuff. That's kind of my go-to, um cheap meal that I like to do. Um, but yeah, England was definitely a fun deployment. Um, I can only talk about, you know, bits and pieces of it, but I will kind of tell some of that story throughout these images. And um, it's really fun, really nostalgic to go through and open up some of these images that I haven't seen um, in about two and a half years. Um, I deployed in 2018. Um, back in you know December, January, February time frame, beginning of the year, uh, winter of 2018. We're already in April of um, 2020, good Lord. 
Um, but yeah, that was definitely a fun deployment. Got to see a whole bunch of cool stuff. Um, got to travel Europe a little bit, um, see a lot of England, and had an absolute blast. So it's always fun to go back and look at some of these images. Um, I remember my channel was kind of just getting started. I took a little bit... Um, awesome chicken and rice that's what I had for dinner too it was pretty darn good um, I'm sure you guys are probably better cooks than uh, I am especially with all the uh, exploring you guys got to do in Japan and checking out all those restaurants that uh, with your restaurant reviews um, hey uh, poor photographer good to have you um, glad you got to hang out for a little bit I will see you soon hopefully you can join in on one of our other live streams but Really appreciate you uh, hanging out for about an hour, so I will see you next time. Um, but yeah, chicken and rice is where it's at. That uh, Chicken is probably one of the easiest things to um, throw it in a pan, boil it, broil it, you know, do whatever with it, deep fry it. You can almost do anything you want with chicken. Um, throw some rice, which is always super cheap and super filling, and get a nice uh, meal out of it but that's kind of my go-to is chicken and rice as well um, just get some individual serving packets of rice and uh, do a whole load of you know a couple pounds of maybe two pounds of crock pot chicken and that'll usually I'm just kind of cooking for myself right now so that'll usually last me you know four or five days if I kind of get my meal prep set out to go and it's a decent, decent filler and a decent amount of protein without um, too much junk. And I am definitely one for junk food, and I will eat like garbage, and I will eat pizza all week unless I meal prep for myself. So, um, yeah, again, chicken and rice is the way to go. Um, I did get sick of that a little bit when I was in England. Um, our, uh, what was it called? Our mess hall or our chow hall, all they served was very bland chicken and if you've been to Europe they're not a huge fan of salt and pepper or seasoning so everything is very plain um, because in America we are very fat and we like our salt and our sodium and our heart attack so um, it was uh, definitely difficult I'm not sure um, uh, Ryan you definitely know more about you know Japan and I know they have, you know, their different sauces that are pretty high in sodium, and America does too, but England definitely wasn't like that. Um, everything seemed quite a bit healthier. I did have my fair share of, you know, fried fish and my fish and chips and stuff like that, and wasn't the healthiest person, but England did have some pretty darn bland food, so I brought my own little thing of, you know, Tabasco sauce with me, and I threw it on everything. So... Um, I think my laptop has cooled down a little bit. I didn't mean to bore you guys with um, me talking about food, but I will get back to... Oh, man, it's getting a little bit late. But I'm here to stream for a couple hours, because why not? Um, I'm going to check on Twitter real quick. Throw out a little notification on there that I was live streaming. I'll just make sure uh, I think I sent it. Just going to double check here. Um, make sure we have uh, invited everyone to the live stream. Cool, got a couple people there. Um, I believe I posted it in our Discord server as well. Um, which, if you are not a part of our Discord server, excuse me, would love to have you guys in there. Um, just a fun place where we drag and drop some photos, uh, do some fun things, critique photos, edit photos, talk about camera gear, camera purchasing, buying, selling, you know, buying different kinds of film, experimenting with stuff like that. Just a lot of fun stuff. So um, if you want to have, you know, a nice little community, feel free to join our Discord server. I have the link in a couple different places. Um, I know I have it in my community tab. Um, and some things like that. So feel free to join, and we'd love to have you. Um, 
let's get back now to Adobe Lightroom and edit some more photos of bombers because that is what I do and that is my job. Um, not so much anymore as some of you know. Um, I don't work with the bombers anymore. That was kind of a temporary, um, it was a long assignment. I was stationed with them up in North Dakota for about four-ish years. Um, it was a little chilly up there, but it was fun. Um, always kept me busy, always kept me on my toes. Um, flying was a bunch of fun. I showed you guys in our last edit, um, flying with the Hueys. Those were really fun, the helicopters. Um, good old Vietnam era helicopters, and that's how darn old they were. Um, but they still flew. They kept us safe. It was a lot of fun. Um, definitely had a lot of fun with that assignment. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, it was a great learning experience. It was a difficult job, but definitely a great learning experience. Um, and I know, um, as some of you know, I am in Colorado right now. Um, and I do space things. Um, let's hit this auto button in Lightroom. Again, because I am as easily distracted as a squirrel. I'm just going to go back and forth between editing and telling a story. But um, again, this was shot on the Nikon D5. As you can see, I was the Nikon D5 has a massive, pretty good uh, dynamic range. So I was able to save some of the highlights. And you can see this aircraft here was actually still on and still running. You can see the distortion here from all the heat. Excuse me, back in these trees over here which is kind of neat. I think this bomber was still taxiing to its parking spot. So I like the way that looks. I'm going to turn down my exposure even more. That's a little bit better. And we're going to go for a nice solid um, silhouette here. I don't think I can salvage. Yeah, there's no detail left in my shadows. But we'll bring up the shadows a touch. I just like, you can see kind of this rim of light here on the engines. That looks kind of cool. I love these bright edges here that direct sunlight against the dark shadows. I think that looks really neat. And then now I'm going to start turning down the black values of this image. Add that contrast, add that vibrance. I think that's looking pretty good. Again, this is another image I'd be very careful with using you know, clarity. I'm going to adjust this crop. I actually like having the sun in this image, I think. Less less ground, more sun. That looks better. And we'll just do a little more crop. And you can see there are some clouds back here. Let's see if we can work on, if I zoom in here, you can just subtly see the edges of those clouds. I really want to see if I can bring that out um, without getting too crazy and bringing out these lens flares from the sun. So let's try some contrast. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. I like that. I might have to use clarity to get some of that mid-tone contrast. Let's crank that up. Ooh, we're getting close. That's not quite it. Let's turn our clarity back down. I don't think texture is going to help us out. No, not really. I know dehaze will, but dehaze can also destroy this image. Yeah, as you can see, when I crank up that dehaze slider, it just really brings out all the dust in my sensor. And, you know, maybe that's the look that you're going for. I'll do a tiny bit, but now I have to go and adjust my white balance and do all sorts of shenanigans to correct for that dehaze filter. And that's actually kind of cool. I like that slightly cooler white balance. Let's turn up our magenta tones in this sunset. That's kind of neat. I like that. And let's set our white balance to daylight. I think 5,500 is pretty good. That's a little bit hot. Let's cool it down to 5,000 Kelvin. Not too shabby. That's looking pretty good, to be honest. Let's take a look at our before and our after. Again, hitting backslash. There's our before. Definitely bright. Um, 
and our after, I'm actually okay with that. I'm okay with the clouds being a little bit muted in the background because we went from having them, you know, completely blown out and, you know, nuclear explosion, super dark or super bright, excuse me, in the background um, to where we were a where we were a able to salvage some of those highlights. So I think that turned out pretty good. Um, I'll mess with some minor things like playing with the brightness of our shadows now. Um, I like how this area of the image kind of goes dark over here, so you focus more on the top. Maybe I'll try a little bit of a graduated filter, a little bit of a gradient here, and knock out some more of these just a little bit. Turn down the highlights and really, you know, turn down the exposure of the bottom of the image. That looks pretty good. Because again, we want our viewer's eye to focus, focus on the aircraft, the sunset, and not necessarily the ground. It's a little bit boring down there. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's take one more look at the before and the after. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the way that turned out. Um, let's go and take a look at some of these other images that I had intended to be silhouettes. I like this one. Um, I like that there are people, whoops, get out of our graduated filter. I like that you can see people walking around in this one. So let's edit this one. Straighten out that horizon a little bit. Go for a nice wide 16 by nine you know, cinematic crop, that looks pretty good. Um, and then let's play with our exposure and just kind of see what we can get. Let's turn it way down. Hey Darko, welcome to the live stream, glad to have you here. Play with our highlights, see what we can salvage back there in the clouds. We've already come quite a quite a long ways from there's the before and there's the after. Um, let's kind of play around. See, actually in this image, I like having some of the detail here by bringing up our shadows. Because if our shadows are too dark, you lose the people that are standing there, these uh, maintenance workers, aircraft maintenance unit guys down here. And I really like seeing this guy and his shadow. It's just... A very and then this guy I didn't even notice his shadow it just makes this very dynamic and you know a lot going on in this particular shot and I enjoy that quite a bit let's uh put our horizon on this lower third I actually do like these little solar flares sun flares that are coming in uh, let's play with our color that looks okay let's play with a different one um Excuse me, landscape looks good. Portrait looks okay. Maybe we'll add some vibrance back. We don't want to go too heavy with the vibrance or the saturation. Again, vibrance helps. Um, it keeps from having your colors clipping, which is nice. Again, most of you probably know this, but if you crank your saturation up all the way, it looks horrible. But I can crank my vibrance up all the way and it definitely looks a lot better because it keeps some of those hues from clipping. Um, hey Jack, welcome to the channel. Um, let's see, what camera did you shoot? So this particular one was shot on a Nikon D5. Um, the lens I shot this on was, let's check right here, um, an 80 to 400. Um, so 80 millimeters to 400 millimeters, and it was a 4.5 to 5.6, which was a variable aperture lens. Um, I'm not a huge fan of variable aperture lenses because your exposure changes as you zoom. So they're usually a little bit cheaper, but, um, kind of sucks that, you know, when you're 
at 80 millimeters, you're going to be at f4.5 as your maximum aperture. When I zoom into 400, um, this particular image was at 160, um, and I had stopped all the way down to 18 so I could get this nice silhouette. But um, it did stink a little bit that I was um, having to deal with, you know, f5.6 when, you know, a nice fast sports lens um, like the 70 to 200 2.8, I can open that sucker all the way up to 2.8 and keep it there, whether I'm at 70 or at 200. But to answer your question, um, so again, this was shot on the D5. Um, I believe all of these images were shot on the Nikon D5. Um, what is my favorite zooms or primes? Um, well, I can tell you right off the bat, one of my favorite prime lenses is the Nikon 85 1.4. I also love the 50 1.4 and the 35 1.4. Um, and a lens that I use quite a bit, and I'll actually show that, you know, coming up here, um, I took some super wide shots on the 14 2.8, um, and the Nikon 14 millimeter prime. Now I enjoy um, the 14 millimeter prime a lot more than they have a zoom lens that's a 14 to 24, um, a Nikon zoom. I really don't like it. The vignetting is absolutely horrible. Um, I still own one somewhere. I haven't sold it yet, but I probably will be, you know, selling it pretty soon because you know if I take that super wide bulky lens, the only reason I'm using it. Um, the only reason I use that dang lens is for, you know, 14 millimeter, the widest you can use. So you may as well use the prime and the prime is a lot sharper, less vignetting, less chromatic aberration. So one of my up and coming favorites is definitely the 14, um, 2.8. So I'm actually going to put my glasses on right now. My eyes are getting a little bit strained looking at this computer screen. So I hope you guys don't mind. I'm just going to look at my camera make sure these look okay glasses are a little bit dirty so it's a little di difficult to see what the heck I'm doing and yeah here is I use um, for live stream this OBS freeware studio it's kind of cool I enjoy using it gets the job done works pretty well and I have a lot of control over what I do so if any of you guys do live streaming I would certainly um, give a thumbs up to this OBS studio. And this is version 24.0.2. Um, there we go, I can see again. Uh, hopefully there's not too much flare for my light going on right here. But love being able to see when I'm photo editing. Um, actually does come in handy. Um, let's see, so where were we at? Um, yeah, thank you, Jack. Glad to have you guys here. Um, uh, sorry I didn't get a video out today. I've just been super busy. I actually I went for a photo walk today um, with one of my co-workers just to you know get out. And uh, yes, we did maintain our physical six foot distance for the entire walk. Um, tried to stay away from everybody so we didn't you know try and go out and infect anyone. I know I'm doing you know pretty healthy. Um, been pretty quarantined for a little bit. Um, Awesome, you do street photography as well. Um, I hear the X-T2 is a pretty awesome camera. One of my buddies at school um, last year had one and he absolutely loved it. And I really love, I love the handling and um, Fujis are a lot of fun. I got my Nikon Z6. Then I'll show you real quick. Um, the Z6 is a lot of fun. Um, where's my... The Z6 is fun. I got the Z6. I just, I love the handling of it. It just, it fits so well in your hands. And I know the Fuji does as well. Um, Fuji makes some very ergonomically well-designed um, cameras. And I really love, I love using Fuji. Um, again, as I told you guys before, I'm easily distracted and just realized my hands are really dry. So I'm going to awkwardly throw on some hand lotion or it's going to bother me now um but yeah i did um actually did some street photography today 
um, wandered this old little town and it was pretty much empty. Um, it's a little local tourist town here in Colorado. Um, and it was empty because the state is essentially shutting down for people, you know, that are sick and trying to avoid getting other people sick. So I maintain my distance between, um, maintain my distance between people and gonna try and stay healthy but you know I still got to shoot some photos every now and then make sure you know my skills are not gonna atrophy um, but yeah the z6 is definitely a fun photo or um, a fun photo it is a fun camera to take photos on um, I have a lot of fun with it um, I've actually uh, been shooting a lot of film lately if you've kind of been paying attention to the channel uh, one of my goals for 2020 was to shoot film and you know what better time than being quarantined to you know shoot and develop film so so far this year I've probably shot like 10 rolls of film which is great because you know last year I shot like one roll of film and never even got it developed so um, this year I'm working on those goals um, but yeah I'm actually looking for a Fuji um, Fuji film camera right now not sure which one but I kind of want to you know, check everything out, test some things because, you know, film cameras these days are pretty cheap. I can pick one of those guys up for, you know, less than a hundred bucks, sometimes even like five or 10 bucks from, um, like a Goodwill or a thrift shop. So nothing to lose. Um, the front jet shot, uh, which one were you, what were we talking about? This guy got a handful I got this one one of my favorite shots I actually made a print of this one um, and I'm actually working on doing a print of this one too I have one of these that I've already edited um, you know, we got some neat things that will be coming up very soon in the live stream so I guess I should probably get back to editing um, let's see we've edited this tail photo already that looks not too shabby. Um, honestly, I like, I think I like this silhouette a little bit better. Uh, I like that I can see all of the wings. The wingspan is just massive. Um, let's take a look at some of these other photos and start chugging through this. Um, so in this particular image, I just, I took it, I thought it was neat that, you know, you could see these guys um, aircraft maintenance guys down here there was this very apparent you know these heat waves of heat distortion um, oh Oshkosh would be a blast um, one of these days I want to go to the um, tattoo show um, in Europe where all the countries fly in like Russia and Norway and France and Spain and everybody comes in the US Canada um, I think Brazil just you know everybody comes in um, shows off their jets and I hear that's an absolute blast I had missed it by like I think two or three I think it was like maybe it was only a month or two when I was here last time but I did miss it I was a little bit frustrated um, kind of stinks but oh well one of these days I'll get there. Um, just got to keep trying. There we go. That looks pretty good. Yeah, after COVID, I don't think... Uh, or I, I do think most things are being canceled. I don't think, you know, the air tattoo will be happening this year because it usually happens around, you know, early summer, late spring. So I think that is probably done, which is a little bit sad, but what can you do? This is kind of neat. Kind of noticing when I play with my texture, I'm turning up like the texture of this air just dis the heat distortion which i think looks really cool it almost looks like you know melted glass or i'm taking a photo 
through this distorted glass and it looks kind of cool back there so that is one of the few cases I will actually use that texture tab um, yeah one of these days that's kind of been on my bucket list to get my private pilot's license as well um, and just fly some little you know Cessna things like that um, I did you know on one of my flights probably not supposed to talk about it but the pilot let me um, get some stick time in a b-52 which was pretty fun um, I essentially just got to fly this big sucker around in a circle which was pretty darn cool um, one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life gotta gotta admit that um, but yeah I would one of these days love to get um, private pilot's license actually um, do some of my own flying or you know make some friends with someone that already has their private pilot's license so I can photograph and they can fly which would be pretty cool as well um, yeah but look this photo looks okay um, works well as a silhouette kinda cool having these layers here um, and the next photo I'm just gonna sync it up with this one just kind of see what happens. See what it looks like. <clears throat> Very similar photo. I'm not sure why I threw this one in the folder. Oh, I need some more coffee. Whew. So let's see. Um, if you guys want me to skip around to any of the other photos, we were um maybe I'll check out one of these other ones um, hold on one second just gotta answer uh, a couple text messages that I've let go And then, all right, so let's see. We can edit this photo. We can take a look at, I kind of want to play with Brown with some of these more dynamic photos that we've done a lot of silhouettes. Um, these are kind of cool. I always love when I take these photos where you can see these, um, you know, giant jet trails. And I love turning down the black values and then turning up the dehaze. And really making those you know giant streams of exhaust you know really pop out and these photos always look really cool in black and white so maybe I'll do one of these real quick and then we'll move on to one of these nice um, sunset photos I apologize my dog is barking um, give me two seconds to figure out what the heck she is barking at so uh, give me one second I will be right back, you guys, so just hold tight for a second.
All right, I am back. I apologize for that. My dog loves to bark at all of the neighbor's dogs, which is funny but can be kind of a pain in the butt to deal with during live stream. So apologize for all the dog barking and figured while I was up, I'd just warm up my coffee a little bit. Um, but I am back. I'm ready to get back into some editing. We will see um, see some more photos here in just a second. So let me switch back over to Adobe Lightroom. All right, here we go. So, whoops, bring Lightroom back up. And, um, oh boy, more text messages. All right, so let's check out one of these images. We have three images here that look very similar. I think I'm gonna get it narrowed down. Do I have my audio working? Yes, I do. Okay, just making sure. Um, again, I have three very, actually four very similar images. I'm gonna select from these three. We're gonna figure out what, which one are we gonna edit? That one's kind of neat. I like that, uh, Let's see, these two are similar. So between these two, I'd probably go with the right one. And then between the right one and the far left one, ooh, I like both. I like that you can see the ground, but I also like that you can't see the ground on this one. Let's see if this image is sharp. If it is, let's edit this one. I think it's kind of neat. Yeah, that's sharp. You can see the landing gear kind of folding up. Kind of neat in this image. Um, I love the jet is tilted a bit. I'm actually going to emphasize that a little bit more, add a little bit more of a tilt. I like that. Um, and then I think we will go black and white with this one. So let's turn up contrast a little bit. It will turn down the exposure slightly, about a half stop. I think that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, and don't worry, Darko. I I'm absolutely reading all of your messages here in the side as I edit. Um, um, yeah, that would be, that looks like a pretty fun little plane to fly, um, that 145. Um, I was just looking up some images of it on Google Images, um, and it looks pretty neat, like a fun little plane. Um, I didn't know it was um, 30 years old. It did, does look pretty new still. Um, I'm not super versed in a civilian or well versed in civilian aircraft. I know a lot more about uh, military aircraft and the different years those were made, manufactured, flown, all that good stuff. But let's in this image make this exhaust really pop out. You could see it really well in real life, but it was a little bit difficult to make it uh, really pop out in this photo. Or it was you know, difficult sometimes with a raw image for it to be, you know, conveyed as well as I saw it in real life. So let's do that. And I do think I'm going to make this image black and white. So let's hit V on the keyboard. There we go. That looks really cool. Um, we'll still go through, we'll do, I apologize if anybody wants me to slow down at any point during these editing, um, bits, I will absolutely slow down, just let me know. Um, after the first couple images, I usually start speeding up kind of to my normal speed of editing and just kind of blow through some of these images, which... Um, I know it doesn't always help with learning if you're trying to learn some editing, so feel free just to tell me to cool my jets, pun completely intended, um, and slow down a little bit if you're getting lost at all and you're trying to kind of see what I'm doing here. So, um, like I said, I kind of just subconsciously get in this groove of editing. Um, sometimes I forget people are watching and just kind of start, you know, buzzing through the edits. So... Let's add some more contrast, turn up that contrast slider. I love having those jet trails pop out. Turn up our whites, and a little bit of dehaze. Yeah, that's starting to look good. 
and let's take a quick look at the before and the after I think that looks pretty cool let's crop this to a slightly narrower as you guys know by now I'm a huge fan of doing the 16 by 9 I think it's really cinematic let's see what a straight straight on shot would look like kind of like that you know what I think I actually like that better than when I um, had the aircraft banking a little bit um, it was banking over to the right hand side just a touch in the actual image I'm gonna turn down turn down some of that noise still a little bit hot I can basically turn off my color noise correction now because um, we're working with a black and white image so we're gonna see less color noise maybe I'll turn it up a little bit because you know color noise is still noise um, and we'll see what that looks like that looks much better a little bit of grain is good just for a little bit of texture to your image as I was saying earlier in the live stream I never want to get rid of you know a hundred percent of my noise um, this isn't a painting it's a photograph and noise is just noise is a part of it just like um, I've really appreciated noise and grain while I've been shooting film so I think this image looks pretty good I might add a little bit more contrast in um, let's go to our tone curve I haven't used our tone curve too much we'll do the selection tool right here and I'll actually grab parts of my image and make edits to the tone curve here actually that was about all I really needed to do whoa that was a bit much um, I messed that up let's undo that let's get rid of one of those points um, I massively jacked that up and I do that sometimes sometimes I just massively mess it up but that's okay so we can always go back and we can fix it and let that load real quick I think that looks pretty good I am very happy um, very happy with the way that turned out I think the black and white looks pretty good composition looks pretty good um, this is one of those cases um, we're kind of breaking a little bit of a rule um, usually when you have something you know traveling in a certain direction um, as I was showing you with these other images we shot or we edited earlier here um, in this case we have this jet landing on the runway going from right to left and we left all this room over here versus this little bit of room over here we have some space on this left hand side um, just some visual space for this aircraft to move it helps you know with movement versus cropping the image right here and it's you know bumping up against the edge of our composition as the aircraft you know is visually moving from right to left here we kind of broke that rule a little bit in this edit um, and you know that's okay we're allowed to break rules because the aircraft here again was moving from right to left but I wanted to emphasize more I guess of the past um, is a good way to think about it and here in these images we're emphasizing the future what was going to happen the aircraft was going to move to the left so we gave it some some space some movement space over here because we're focusing you know on what the aircraft is doing and what it's gonna do in this image our focus is more on what the aircraft is doing and what it did what it did was leave these smoke trails um, just kind of two different ways of looking at a photograph and looking at you know capturing time and um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for it's on the tip of my tongue conveying time and conveying a sense of you know yeah I think I've kind of said hopefully you guys can kind of understand where I'm going conveying a sense of time and a period of time not only are we showing you know the split uh, one four hundredth of a second that it took to capture this we're showing this you know five six seconds of this aircraft maybe even ten seconds of it kind of slowly going off into the distance and you can see the travel the motion the path um, the time the aircraft has spent in the air so just an interesting thing um, 
almost like showing, you know, footprints in the sand with, you know, at the end of the leading line of the footprints. Excuse me, you have a person standing there and that photograph, you know, you're not just showing the person, you're not just showing the footprints, you're showing and conveying a sense of time, which is really, you know, that's starting to get kind of deep um, when it comes to, you know, just a basic Lightroom editing video. But uh, conveying a sense of time, I think, is very, very important in photography. And um, the more you can do that, and maybe not like the longer of a period of time that you can show, but just, you know, really emphasizing, you know, time and, you know, a fo again, a photograph is more than just that split second of you taking that photo and your shutter opening and closing. It's really all of these things that have come together to make that photograph happen. So we'll move on now. Um, just went on a little bit of a photo rant there. Appreciate you guys uh, sticking through it. Um, always try and use little moments like that, like teaching moments, um, just as new ways for you guys to think about your photography and um, fun stuff like that. So let's move on now. I'm actually going to make this little box a little bit bigger um, right here. There we go. So you can see my face a little bit better if you want to look at my ugly mug while I edit. So we can edit this photo. I thought this was kind of neat. You can see the pilots up here in the cockpit. You got this guy wearing his fancy aviators. Um, kind of a neat shot. Again, we have our super bright lights down here. I threw in a random photo of a nice England sunset. I just, I love the way the clouds look and I do want to edit this photo a little bit more. Then we can move on to some of these silhouettes and then within the next, you know, 10, 15 minutes, hopefully we can get to, you know, these long exposure shots, but maybe we will for now, you know, skip this photo. It's kind of neat. Um, I was actually in line with the edge of the wing of the aircraft in this one and had to get out of the way when it was coming down the runway or the taxiway. Um, pretty, uh, pretty neat experience with these giant jets and I definitely miss working with them. Let's just for fun edit this little, you know, sunset photograph, see what we get out of it. Um, there was an edge of a hanger here that I got in my shot. I'm just going to crop that out a touch. That looks better. It almost looks like we could be, you know, up in the clouds flying. I was definitely on the ground for this, but um, yeah, black and white just does not do this image justice. Look at what happens when I hit black and white, letter V on the keyboard. I'm losing so much of that detail in the oranges of the cloud. It's just, ugh. Color is definitely the way to go with this image. Let's go through some of our different color profiles. Vivid looks really good. Landscape will probably look really good. Ooh, yeah, look at that saturation and that those vibrant colors with that landscape uh, color profile. That looks pretty fantastic. And I remember this is pretty close to what I saw. My um, my goal with this image is to get this as close to what I remember seeing, even though I know I took this photograph two years ago, but I want to make this as close to real life. I'm trying to kind of bring myself back to the moment I took this image. Look at that. Just that little bit of adding whites just added this nice glow down here. And it might be difficult to see in the video. Hopefully, YouTube is not compressing the hell out of this. Yeah, look at that. Woo, a little bit too much, but I like where that's going. That looks good. I would love to see a slightly wider version of this. Go away. Okay, there we go. Just going to keep playing here, play with my highlights. It's going to be hard. You can see most of the detail if you check out my histogram over here. Look at all these pixels over here. Again, the higher the graph is, that's just telling you there's, you know, more pixels in this, you know, combined compressed region. So this is my um <clears throat> this is my highlight area right here um, on the right-hand side and 
it is packed with pixels, which is telling me this huge area of my image, most of my pixels, probably 66%, maybe 75% of my image is in the highlights here. So my goal is going to be to spread this part of my histogram out a little bit and salvage some of these highlights, which is going to be difficult to do. Um, let's see. And to answer your question, have I always been a Nikon shooter? I have not. Um, I was actually, oh man, well, I'll kind of, I'll buzz through my history as a photographer. I actually started out um, a long time ago when I was very young with the little throwaway, you know, point and shoot disposable cameras. Um, they were Fuji and Canon and or excuse me, Fuji and Kodak and a handful of other brands. They had some like Walgreens and Rite Aid brands, some off brands, but that's how I started. And then um, as I got a little bit older, I had a Polaroid camera, um, belonged to my parents, but I borrowed it. Um, I have a lot of Polaroid cameras right now in my collection, but... Um, yeah, D700, not a bad camera at all. I still have um, some old, I think I have like a D300. Um, I have, yeah, I got some older cameras. I still have my Canon 5D Mark II, which was the first DSLR that I ever bought myself back in 2009, 2009-2010-ish. Um, um, I bought the Canon 5D Mark II absolutely love 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 that camera uh, one of the first cameras to shoot you know full hd 1920 by 1080 24 frames per second um uh, video and it was just absolutely you know breathtaking video at the time super great tool for photojournalists but you know there are times when I actually you know i pull my canon 5d mark ii out of the closet it is, I've had it for over 10 years, almost 11 years now. Um, I've been thinking about selling it, but there's some times where it's just, I pull it out of the closet and the color just looks great. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry, I'm answering text messages that are coming in as I'm trying to stream. I apologize for that, but still got to take care of life. Um, but yeah, Canon 5D Mark II is a great camera. I mean, still is a great camera. Oh, man, I'm tired. Huh. I'm just forgetting to breathe every now and then. Um, yeah, the 5D Mark II, great camera. Still gets the job done. Um, I have a 24 to 105 lens on that right now. Um, but at the time, I couldn't afford a whole bunch of glass for it. Um, so I had bought some cheaper Nikon, you know, manual glass, film camera glass. Um, that was F mount and uh, just adapted that to my 5D Mark II. So I was shooting, you know, with a Nikon 50 millimeter 1.8 on my 5D Mark II, which was a lot of fun actually. Um, but yeah, Fuji. Um, Fuji is great. Their new camera bodies are fantastic. I know their lens lens quality has been fantastic. Um, Canon, I've been, you know, honestly a little bit disappointed with, and I told myself I'd. I wouldn't buy another Canon camera unless I saw a massive improvement from Canon. And just over the years, I've been, you know, disappointed by Canon and watching, you know, Panasonic and Sony and Olympus and Fuji and all these other cameras dropping uh, mirrorless cameras with great image quality and, you know, 4K video, 24, 36, whatever megapixels. Then finally, Nikon dropped a um, Z7 and Z6, and then finally, Canon, excuse me, Canon dropped their um, uh, Canon EOS R cameras, and the R was supposed to, you know, stand for revolution or revolutionary. But Canon was like, I don't know if they were literally, literally the last brand to jump on the mirrorless train, but they were pretty darn close to being the last. And you really can't call yourself, you know, revolutionary at that point. It gets a little bit frustrating. So needless to say, I've been a little bit frustrated with Canon. So yeah, I jumped jumped that ship because um, I, 
I used to kind of consider myself a little bit of a Canon fanboy, um, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I'm at this point in my career, I shoot on what takes, I guess, the best tool for the job. What takes the best image for the project that I'm going to use it for. So, you know, if the project is going to require a Sony or a Nikon or a Canon, that's that's what I'm going to try my hardest to shoot on is the best project or, you know, trying to use my skill, talent, whatever to get the best product out of whatever the heck, you know, I'm using. Um, and I think that is a bigger skill or skill set to learn than anything else in photography is, you know, using what you have. Um, I know not everybody out there including myself can afford to you know buy a new camera every time it comes out you got to learn the basics and um you know use what you got um to get the best image you can possibly get and that's that's really what it comes down to that's if there's you know a secret to photography you know the secret to photography i think that's really it using what is in your can what is in your hands um and at the moment, if all you have is a phone, that's what you got to use. Or, you know, don't take the image and miss the shot. But, um, but yeah, Fuji makes some, you know, darn good images. Um, and, yeah, if you have a full decked out kit of Fuji and Fuji takes the images you need to and gets the job done, you know, why upgrade? Why, why change from that process if you're getting the job done? Um, I just, I think that's a smart way to think about things. Um, and you know, what they call it, gear acquisition syndrome. It is hard to, uh, it's hard to not want more gear. Like I will, I'll be the first person to admit, like when that new, new Nikon, you know, drops, when Sony drops one of their new A7S3, S4, R3, R4, R5, whatever they're going to come out with next, um, or A9 camera, I mean, I am, trust me, I'm the first person that's going to want one of those cameras, but I mean, that's, that's why I've honestly gone back and started shooting film, um, even with a point and shoot, a full auto point and shoot, because sometimes it's, you got to get away from the gear, get away from the money and just, you know, just shoot. Um, and again, I'll be the first person to admit there's a lot of times where I forget, why, you know, why I started. And, you know, back when I was, you know, a fanboy of Canon, like Darko, you mentioned a little bit, I was absolutely a Canon fanboy. I thought Canon was the shit and that was it. And I absolutely hated on Nikon and I hated on people that shot Nikon. And looking back on that, um, yeah, I was a fool for doing it. Um, I got really good at, you know, pixel peeping and um, being one of those people that, you know, pointed out every little detail and everything wrong. And I could tell you, you know, that Sony noise and grain was, you know, bluish and, you know, Canon grain was slightly warmer and reddish and Canon had a flatter looking photo and Nikon was very contrasty and had some, you know, purplish noise to it. But it was all a bunch of crap and I was missing the bigger picture and again, pun completely intended, the bigger picture was, you know, the photograph itself, not, I couldn't see the forest through the trees. Um, I was missing the entire photo and paying attention to stupid details. Um, but yeah, exactly. It's the, the Ford versus Chevy versus um, Mazda, Toyota, um, Mac versus PC debate. It's useless. Use what, you know, gets the job done. Um, for you and you know what I use to get my job done and what I think gets the job done best for me might not get the job done best for you so your Fuji excuse me for example would probably get the job done better in your hands than it would in my hands and maybe my Nikon would get my job better done in my hands you know I mean whatever you're used to using and um, your photo making device, whatever it is, whatever brand it is, your camera is, you know, an extension of you. And hopefully, um, if you're out there 
you know, even as a hobby, you've used your camera long enough to know the ins and the outs of that piece of equipment or tool. I mean, whether your tool is a hammer, or a drill, a screwdriver, or a shovel, um, you know it best. So, shot events. Yes, I have. I've shot a lot of events. I have shot. Um, let's see if I have any here. Actually, in the military, we shoot a lot of events, uh, promotions, ceremonies, things like that. I just shot a wedding a couple weeks ago. Um, sorry, my jaw needs to crack. Ugh, it's just annoying. Um, let's take a look at my collections. I shot a lot, a lot of concerts. Um, I don't think all of these images are loaded, but maybe I can give you a quick preview of some of the concerts. Like, I photographed, uh, oh, maybe they are loaded on here. I photographed Aerosmith. Um, here are some shots. Um, I thought this was kind of cool. I just, uh, there was some lightning striking in the background behind, um, you know, the soundboard at this Aerosmith concert. So I was like, forget the concert, um, the lightning striking in the back of the concert. So here's, uh, there is Steven Tyler at the Aerosmith concert. Um, Aerosmith is pretty, uh, they're getting pretty old. Let's see. Now it looks like my Kid Rock photos aren't here. Uh, Montgomery Gentry before um, this guy actually passed away not too long ago, a couple of years ago. I think two years ago in a helicopter accident crash. Um, yeah, I shot... This concert was a lot of fun. I guess I don't have these images loaded. I think they're on a hard drive. Uh, Seether. Oh, Seether was a fun band to photograph. Um, really liked. This was, I think Seether was one of my first concerts. Um, I shot a lot of, uh, let's see. Actually, I, I take that back. All American Rejects was one of my first concerts. Um, but actually, I go back and I mess with these photos all the time. Um, I think I had a pretty good, you know, visual variety of what happened. But um, let's see, I've shot Kid Rock, uh, Billy Currington, uh, Aerosmith, Montgomery Gentry, just a handful of um, concerts. Actually, um, I got a lot, I have a lot of fun shooting concerts. They are a blast to shoot and then there's there's some of my other military photos i did in a um previous um previous edit i'm not sure if i showed you guys these but you can check out how i edited these images in my other first uh military photo editing live stream but i'll get back to some of these photos but um yeah, one of the first actual um, concerts I had ever gone to was a blues concert. Um, whoops, I just merged those two collections together. Oh, I just selected the main one. Let's go back to this one. There we go. Damn it, what do I keep doing? Sorry, I keep breaking things and I apologize. Nope. Here we go. Okay, I am done breaking things. I s ah, no. I'll keep breaking things, I promise. Um... Yeah, I think, honestly, local bands, if you can, um, it's actually pretty easy to, I mean, in my opinion, the bands that I shot were very, very easy to get into. I just contacted the venues or I contacted um, venue managers um, and people that um, essentially coordinated everything. And honestly, if you want to shoot a big concert, it's really not that difficult to do. And people make it sound like it is super difficult. And I know a lot of people that shoot concerts kind of for a living or do it as their main hobby, they try and make it sound really difficult. And they try and kind of act like gatekeepers and not let other people do it. But it is, you know, some people don't understand if you can, uh, if you get a little bit of a portfolio just shooting, you know, in a bar or you know, smaller local venues with smaller bands, you know, start working on your name as a photographer. And I guarantee you, you can get in and shoot some of these bigger bands and stuff like that. Um, yes, I do. Um, I got Photoshop 
I don't know if you can see it down here in the lower bar. I use Photoshop all the time, and I use Photoshop on probably 99 to 100% of every image I ever publish. So as you can see, I'll go through these images in Lightroom, but I will basically always... Um... Sorry, I'm going to yawn again. Oh, dear. Okay. Maybe I'm more tired than I thought. But I will take like all of my images into Photoshop as kind of like a final, final edit and a final touch up. Um, but I do, I'm gonna kind of get back to your question in a second. I do do, do also do composite images as well. Um, I have, I don't have that many tutorials I don't think on my channel about compositing, but that's definitely something I should get into because um, I do those as well um, every now and then. Um, so as you can see, this stuff is, you know, my day-to-day -day actual job, you know, being in the Air Force and now being a photographer for the Space Force. This is my kind of day-to-day stuff. But um, yeah, for funsies on the side, I do do a lot of, uh, you know, Photoshop composites and, you know, fun edits like that to keep myself, you know, busy and all that fun stuff so that uh oh boy my phone is blowing up again whoops okay um yeah that is awesome um if you can you know get in with you know smaller bands i've actually found it more hey welcome uh welcome freddie glad to have you um thank you um i've actually found it more difficult to photograph smaller bands than like i could get into an m, &M concert or a um you know and anything big band concert like you name it um uh lincoln park i could probably get in there easier than a smaller no-name local band in a city just because they usually have a photographer and their photographers are usually very um you know and i would be too um but kind of controlling of the scene um that their band like the photographer sees the band as you know their band and the band sees that photographer as hey this is our photographer that's going to capture us in a certain way and make us look good or whatever in a certain way so um the word I don't want to use the word controlling. That's not the right word. Um, um, possessive, I guess. Um, so I've just kind of noticed a lot of, you know, when a photographer either goes on tour with a band as they start getting a little bit bigger, or um, it's you know you have a city like you know Denver or Atlanta where a band is located in you know that city. They usually find a photographer in that city. Usually another creative kind of friend or creative. Um, you know, mind that they work together, they work well together, and they go, you know what, I'm only going to work with this person. So that stinks sometimes, but, you know, also they, you know, develop that relationship where the photographer knows exactly what the band is going to do for every, you know, set and stuff like that. So um, one thing I want to start doing is shooting lo more local Colorado bands as well. So I'm working on it. It's um, like I said, it's not easy to do, but it is something I definitely want to do in the future. Um, Facebook, hang on, Light Stalker. So Light Stalkers, that's not the same as the Light Stalkers website, is it? Or because there's a Light Stalkers Twitter page and website. It's actually a blog, I think. I follow Light Stalkers. Maybe it's different. Um, We have 300. Awesome. Yeah. Anytime you guys, um, feel free to share my videos there. And if you have any, um, specific requests or anything like that, um, I try to be, you know, as personable as possible and feel free to contact me directly via, um, my email. Um, my Gmail is run and gun photo at gmail.com. So, um, I think you can also find that on my, um, okay, so you guys are different. You're not the blog. Um, 
<clears throat> but yeah, I would love if you didn't, if you don't mind, I'd love to join. Um, either I really don't do Facebook too much. If you guys had like a Twitter page or anything like that, I do a lot more Twitter. I just I'm not a huge fan of Facebook, but yeah, absolutely. Feel free to share any of my videos. And if you want to send me a direct email, if you want to contact me, you know, on my community page on here, um, but email, I read, you know, every day. I'm always checking my email or Twitter, or whatever. And there are about a half dozen ways to contact me. Um, but yeah, feel free. You know, anybody can ask me any questions they want to. Send me a direct email, a direct message. And if there are enough requests, maybe I can do, you know, a specific video on a technique. Maybe I do a video on, you know, concert photography. If you have like a lot of concert photographers in your group. Um, but yeah, anything I, again, like I said, I try and be as personable as possible. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I am just another photographer that enjoys, um, taking fun images. So I am absolutely open. Oh boy. One of my buddies is sending me photos of plants. I apologize. I got a, let's see, run and gun photo at gmail.com. That is correct. So that is my, um, that is my Gmail. Um, I said, I answer that as much as possible. I look at it basically every day at the most. I will go, you know, a weekend without looking at it, you know, a day or two tops if I'm on vacation. Um, But yeah, I'm always, again, always checking emails. Feel free to shoot me an email. If you have an idea or you, let's say you have, you know, 20 or 30 people in your group that are all asking, you know, how do you, how do you contact, you know, a band? Excuse me. How do you contact like a venue manager and anything like that? How do you get into, I want to shoot, you know, Drake this weekend, or I want to shoot Pink Floyd this weekend. How do I get in and photograph that band? I I can tell you how to do it. It's not difficult, and I can do a whole video series on it. Um, I did a video like three years ago on how to shoot concert photography, which I really need to redo that video because it was it was bad. It was three years ago. Um, and now that this channel has been going for a little bit, I look back at some of my older videos and just cringe a little bit and um, kind of go, oh, Lord, I was kind of back when I was scared to be in front of the camera, so... That's uh, that is my story, a little bit of it. So I'm having a little bit of a struggle cropping this photo because um, you can see if I I kind of want to put the plane about right there in the image, but I'm losing all of these clouds down at the bottom. I'm just getting a little bit of them, and I don't like that. So I'm kind of trying to play around with I can put the jet right there. I don't want to lose these guys down here. Maybe I have to kind of tilt it a little bit and go like that. I just, I feel like I'm losing so much in the clouds. Maybe I have to go with a narrow, a narrow crop. That's a little bit too short and fat. Let's try. Because, huh. again, I don't want to lose these guys at the bottom. That's a little bit better. Just the composition is bothering me in this photo. And sometimes there are just photos that doesn't matter how you crop them. Sometimes the composition just kind of blows. And that is okay. And we're getting there. We're getting a little bit better. But, yeah, sometimes, you know, I take crappy photos, too, all the time always taking bad photos. The key is to take less bad photos. Yeah, see, I think I need this cloud right here. And I'm going to get like super technical kind of into composition right now, but I start losing this cloud right here. And you can see that cloud is giving me a sense of balance because I have all these clouds here. And if I crop that guy out, I have no clouds going on on this kind of this third of the image. So I need this guy for some balance. Um, 
to have the clouds kind of do this delta or V shape around the jet. Um, what it takes to make a YouTube channel in 2020. Oh man. Um, to be honest, I, I don't know. I made my channel in 20, uh, 2016, 2017. Um, and that's a lot different probably is my guess. It might be the exact same. I would, um, I am sorry. I keep getting more and more text messages. Um, Um, yeah, it was what it takes. I think every year it kind of changes because we had there was a year where um, you know YouTube decided just you know cut monetization for everybody um, and cut more importantly the monetization. Like I don't care about the money. It was the YouTube partnership, which you got so many benefits from being you know a partner with YouTube. Um, you know, it's being on YouTube is so much more than the money. Um, and I definitely if. I wouldn't recommend YouTube, and I can I can talk all day if you guys want to talk about you know YouTube channel stuff. I will gladly answer all the questions you have based on my own you know personal experience. But if you're getting into YouTube for the money, that's uh ooh that looks really cool. Sorry again, squirrel. I get distracted. Um, I personally I think if you're getting into YouTube for the money, that's kind of the wrong reason. Um, and again, I'm not saying anybody is. Some people are, um, but really there's very, very little money in YouTube. So one of the things I liked about the whole community, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Being a partner with YouTube, excuse me, um, it just made making videos easier. It made, it felt like your videos got promoted more. I think that's a myth, and I don't think, um, I think it's kind of exaggerated. People are like, oh yeah, if you um, are a YouTube partner, you're monetized, your videos get advertised more. I don't think that's, you know, true, but it definitely feels like it sometimes. Because um, I remember it was a big deal losing that partnership that one year, and a lot of people just, you know, quit YouTube, and I could imagine... And at the time, I didn't have, you know, that was before I had 1,000 subscribers. I'm almost at 9,000 now. So it was a couple years ago. But um, I didn't have 1,000 subscribers. So, And then I had another YouTube channel before that where I would make short films and stuff. And I had only had like 60 subscribers. But YouTube was, you know, giving away partnerships like candy. So I already had my YouTube partnership. Um, just for being, you know, a creator, and I lost it, which is very, very frustrating. Because um, I felt like, I mean, I really didn't do that much work for it, but I felt like I had done, you know, I had worked, I had kept up a channel since 2009 um, for like six, seven years at the time, um, and just kind of lost it, which sucked. Um, but then I started the Run and Gun channel in 2016, 2017-ish. Um, and that is when, um, you know, I was, I already ha had my YouTube partnership because, you know, I was just, you know, creating a new YouTube account under, you know, a slightly different username. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but I think this turned out pretty good. I was going to go black and white with this image, but I love the subtle... Um, yeah, so there was the black and white, and I'll turn off split toning. But this is one of those very rare occasions where split toning really worked out for me. So there was the black and white. Um, definitely a little bit moody, and I'll get back to that YouTube conversation in a second. But here's the color and the split toning, and I love the gradient from purple to orange. I think that just turned out really neat. I'm going to turn up my vibrance a bit. Add some more color to this photo. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, absolutely, Darko. Thank you for joining. Glad to have you in here for a couple hours. Um, sorry to talk your ear off a little bit, but um, yeah, I will uh, get to your email in a second. Um, actually, not a second. Probably in a couple hours. Um, 
I will definitely read it tonight. I have to go to work in the morning as well. Um, I'm not sure if tomorrow I'm teleworking or if I, if I actually have to go into work. I'll figure out in the morning, I guess. Um, but I will definitely read your email. I will reply to it the best I can. Um, thanks for shooting that out to me. And if there's any issue um, with the email address or anything like that, I'll make sure I get a hold of you somehow on here or um, something like that. But I'll be sure to figure out how to answer your question or whatever you sent. So definitely uh, thank you so much for coming out and um, keeping me some company so I don't bore myself while I edit by myself. So definitely big thanks for coming out. Um, yeah, Freddie, sorry, I kind of got sidetracked with my edit a little bit. Um, there's the raw, there's the before. It almost looks black and white. And there is the after. I'm actually going to sync those settings up with the rest of these similar images um yeah absolutely have fun i hope uh i don't know if you can see that in the camera lots of fun not many people can do that so it's take some practice but a little bit fun we tell each other that all the time uh like i said i wasn't told you guys i was in the space force so lots of uh lots of fun star wars and star trek jokes in the space force and i don't know if you guys can see it um, I have a giant, uh, right there. I have a giant X-Wing fighter right there behind me. It's like, let's see if I can move this guy so you can see it better. Yeah, right on my desk right there. Big old, right, right here. Big old X-Wing fighter. I'll, uh, I was actually, uh, for one of my photo challenges last week, my photo assignment, um, for shooting light, I was actually, I put that guy in the window um, so it was a completely white background and uh, was shooting photos of that X-Wing and just having a lot of fun with it. So um, I'll probably end up using that guy. Uh, yep, you can probably see it right there. I'll um, I'll use that guy for some more videos, do some fun Star Wars-y, Star Trek-y um, kinds of things in the future. Um, what is my phone blowing up about now? All right, sorry about that. Hopefully, Freddie, I hope I kind of um, kind of answered your question. Um, I would not mind at all doing a video, um, you know, on what it takes to start a channel in 2020. I can at least tell you, um, you know, I know YouTube, I'm not sure if you have a channel right now or if you plan on making one, um, and you know kind of some of the, I guess, struggles with having a YouTube channel, um, you know, getting a partnership is definitely um, a bit of a struggle. You have to have, you know, a certain amount of followers, a certain amount of watch time that they calculate in hours. Um, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, 4,000 hours of watch time and, you know, a thousand, you know, followers, subscribers, whatever you want to call them. Um, that is a thing that hasn't always been there, so that makes it more difficult now than, you know, when I joined. But like I was saying earlier, I did, I had a partnership, and I I did lose it for a long time, for a year or two, um, with YouTube, just because they decided to um, come up with that rule. And I think it was, you know, to deter, you know, spam people and people that were... Um, you know, taking advantage of kids and stuff like that on the internet and just people doing dumb stuff, which, you know, there's always, you know, one bad person that has to ruin something for everybody. That's just the way the world kind of works. Um, so YouTube, it used to be so much easier to get a partnership on YouTube. Um, good old Lou. Yeah, I, um, I'm a nerd. I got the glasses sometimes, uh, once it's this late, it's, well, it's a lot later where you were at, but was it 1230? But, uh, yeah, I've just been kind of cruising for like two and a half hours. I'm about to pass out. I think at some point I'm just going to, you know, smash my face on my keyboard. But yeah, about an hour ago, I just had to put the glasses on because my eyes were killing me. I can only edit. Um, I try not to wear these too much because, you know, 
especially when I'm doing videos and stuff. I got, you know, bounce lights coming here and I'm sure I can't see my video stream right now, but I get all these like glares and reflections and stuff like that. And for my videos, it's just so much easier not to wear glasses. Um, total pain in the ass, but yeah, I appreciate it, man. Um, good Lord, my phone is still blowing up. Um, but yeah, I need, I really need to get, so these are my, um, these are actually my military boot camp glasses and they suck a lot. I mean like the prescription's good. They get the job done, but these tiny little frames, oh, man. Uh, huh. I hate this frame. So I had actually, I don't know if I have them anymore. Good Lord. I have a silver pair somewhere, which were a little bit better, but they had smaller frames and smaller um you know bands wires whatever yeah so you are you're probably more used to wearing those i only wear these when i'm driving at night uh sometimes when i'm reading and then if i spend a long long time working on the computer i'll just kind of strain my eyes and it sucks and it i can't tell at this point my eyes have changed so much in the last few years. I can't tell if I'm nearsighted or farsighted or I don't know what the heck I am. Um, there's something interesting I just noticed with this photo. Um, as I was kind of going this long exposure, if you check out these lens flares, this is just kind of neat. I don't know where it's coming from. If it's coming from these fluorescent lights, but here is, ah, you can see my car right there. Um, oh man, yeah, so I've had, I've actually had eye issues for, God, as long as I can remember, um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm absolutely the same way, I have a problem where my left eye is stronger than my right eye, but over the years, my left eye has just been so overworked, um, the muscles or whatever just, you know, I'm tired, both of my eyes suck at this point. So it used to be like I would see great out of my left eye when I close my right eye. And when I just use my right eye, I couldn't read shit. So now I'm at the point where I can't see shit out of either eye. So, um, yeah, it's fun. I'm pretty much blind. Um, but, yeah, I'm just editing photos from a deployment, which was uh, kind of fun. Um, I just I thought it was neat. I just got distracted by these lens flares. Maybe it's coming from this guy right here, but it's just kind of cool. Look, you can see these rainbow artifacts, and then they turn green, and then they turn blue, and then they turn purple, and then they turn r rocket lollipop, or rocket ship freeze pop colors, red, white, blue right here. And then there's just, you know, dust on my camera because I'm a dirty little hamster that doesn't clean my sensor very well. Um, and there was... There's our chow hall right there behind that razor wire and stuff. But yeah, that was just kind of a cool lens flare. And this is the 14 2.8. Yep, at F22. And it was 25 seconds long. Here's another long exposure I did. You can see this truck, um, you know, entering the gate right there. Um kind of cool stuff. There was our chapel, our little church back there at uh, Aria Fairford. I just thought this was a kind of cool image. We'll play with editing it a little bit. I don't think you can... Holy crap, my lens is a mess. And I think that is crap on the lens. I can see stars back there. Um, the light pollution was... We were honestly way in the countryside. Um... But look at all that crap you can see on my lens. It's probably part of it's on my sensor too from shooting at f22. But yeah, that's just me being a dirty gerbil and uh, not cleaning my gear properly while I was deployed. So one of these days I will learn my lesson. But honestly, I don't think originally I did much to edit this photo. I just added some contrast, a little bit of clarity to make... um some of these light streaks and uh, long exposure light trails and even the stars pop out uh, just a little bit. You can see a star there and there. Oh, excuse me. But um, 
yeah, holy crap, all these lens flares. And, God, I love these um, star points that come off of these, you know, long exposure F-22 shots. They just, they look pretty neat. Well, let's get back to some uh, aircraft photos because I know you guys didn't come here for my jokes. Um, maybe Lou did, but he's got a sick sense of humor like I do. Uh, let's crop this guy. I thought this was a fun photo. Um, this is a bomber sitting on the... Um, in its little parking area on the flight line. And what was cool about this silhouette is if you zoom in... Woohoo! Um, you can see these little maintenance guys working on the bomb racks, which is kind of neat. And they're... It's hard to see, but they're actual live bombs right there. And there are some bombs over there. And I cannot tell you where we dropped those bombs, but bombs were dropped. And that is the fun part of my job. All right, so we're going to crop the photo in there. This is a pretty heavy silhouette. Let's try and get some... Uh... Oh, Lord, my photo is blowing up. Um, I do. I definitely remember Jacob. Um, um, but yeah, what is, was it, what's his last name? Carlson? Jacob Carlson? Is that his, if I'm not mistaken? I know that's, I'm pretty sure that's the name of his channel. Um, check out Jacob. Pretty cool dude. Um, what is up with, uh, what's up with Jacob? How's he doing? editing and a little bit of a little bit of contrast I want to pull out some of these details in the clouds to the best of my ability um, oh man um that would be cool to take a look at does he have like a PDF version anywhere that we can kind of see I had thought about doing that you know a while ago I was just watching a YouTube video about doing potentially doing some sort of zine and I thought it would be fun to make um, either a zine or a photo book out of some of my military stuff. Just make like a whole, you know, jets or bombers or F-16s or whatever um, out of all the dang photos. Because I have so many freaking, um, you know, military related things that I can use that I could I could fill up a whole book with all this stuff. So that's honestly, that's... I'm hoping maybe he does a video about kind of how he made it. Um, but I think it would be a lot of fun because there's nobody else, honestly, on YouTube that's kind of doing this kind of stuff. I mean, that's why I started my channel in the first place. Um, only physicals. Okay, I will definitely check that out. If you can shoot me a um, either an email or um, Instagram sweet as long as somebody would at least one person would uh be able to read it and i can cry that nobody reads my magazine um but yeah if you can shoot me over the details or links of where he got that i'd absolutely um let's see i think he said sweet i will watch that video then i'll be on top of that um just remind me in case i forget so if i don't harass you in about a week um for details, it means that I forgot because I'm a lazy hobo and I forget things a lot. Um, oh yeah, definitely do that. That'll that'll make me happy. Um, but yeah, that'd be something. It's been something that I've been thinking about, especially with this quarantine garbage. Um, which, if you can't tell, I'm getting a little bit sick of. Um, I mean, I've always kind of looked for different ways. I've tried, you know, the, was it Shutterstock or Shutter whatever? Um, God, Shutterbug, the books, the free book that they give you. It's like you just pay for shipping and you get like a free book or it's like a $10 book coupon. I've tried doing that and some of those work, some of them don't. Sometimes you never get your book if it's free. Um but I would definitely like to make something, um, you know, that I can set on a coffee table or just, you know, keep on my desk at work because, 
Um, with the Space Force junk that I do today, um, I mean, I work in a classified building. I can't even have my phone with me, so I can't be like, yeah, bro, here's my Instagram. Um, oh, damn, look what that did. Enable profile corrections. That really got rid of a lot of vignetting from that 14 mil. Damn, that looks good. Um, what I was going to do, I came to the lens correction tab, was to remove this little bit of chromatic aberration. didn't even hardly bother me. Um, going around some of these guys' heads and stuff, and if I were ever to print this out, um, you know, chromatic aberration sucks, and it's Satan's little toy that he likes to play with in photography, and, you know, the chromatic aberration demons are alive and well. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of that vignette back. Um, it just feels a little unnatural when the edges are too bright, and I want the focus to go right here, so... Pretty cool. Turned out pretty cool. Um, that looks good. I will sync up this next image um, just to save some time. Um, trying to make all the exact same damn edits to it. Um, let's see what that looks like. As soon as it loads. All right, so this one I did shoot. Whoops, we're getting ahead of ourselves there. Don't look at that. Um, this one I shot looks like I got a little bit closer and tilted the camera up a little bit um, which I was, I'm still gonna crop this guy into a 16 by 9 ish but there was a reason why I kept some of that sky so I will keep it in this composition but yeah sorry for distracting myself um, I for sure want to try and make a little excuse me, zine thing like that. Um, that'd be pretty cool, I think. Because like I said, it's been something that has been on my mind. I just need that. Um, I love seeing other people do it. Because then if it's a massive royal screw-up, it wasn't my screw-up, and it was somebody else's. Um, but I am definitely excited to see what he comes up with. Um, let's see, you might be interested. I just finally ordered uh, from Cinestill. Um, no, not the film, damn it, I keep forgetting. But um, I ordered one of their development kits, um, just a C41 kit, and that should be here. Um, good lord, what's somebody's, somebody's blowing up my IG. Um, but um, yeah, I ordered one of those development kits. It should be here in the mail anytime now, but I ordered a freaking... Um, two or three bottles of um, of nothing, empty bottles, glass bottles, um, for mixing all of my chemicals and stuff like that. But the issue is that um, I ordered those off of Amazon, and freaking Amazon is just now like, hey, um, I know how you paid for like four to five, bi four to five business day shipping. Um, it's actually not even gonna ship for you know 30 something days i was like what the hell amazon um so i'm needless to say i'm very frustrated with amazon right now um because essentially you know like there was no warning until like a week ago where amazon started amazon started doing these giant um press release things or whatever and now there's banners all over the website that say hey your shipment's probably going to be delayed like 30 days like hey that would have been nice to know when i actually ordered my stuff and yes i know first world problems um so yeah um that is kind of crappy like honestly i just i would have been <laughs> okay if I would have just known you know when I click to buy something um, uh, thanks Lou appreciate you coming through and um, I will finish my rant to um, to somebody else but yeah have a good night I'm gonna be dipping out here shortly um, or in a couple hours who knows we'll play the fun game of if I die in a live stream or fall asleep so yeah have a good night man um, yeah, but for the rest of you guys listening to this live stream, I don't, I try not to rant about too many things, but 
I was just a little bit frustrated with Amazon, but I will keep the rest of that rant to myself. Um, what I will say is I'm a little bit frustrated with myself, um, myself two years ago, that when I took this photo, that's going to load here in a second, I just decided to sync up these settings. When I took this photo, it doesn't look like I was dead on centered with the aircraft, which is making me a little bit mad with myself. Like, bro, was I not able to even center myself up? But I think I fixed that. There we go. I kind of fixed it in that one. And let's see. That I thought was a cool shot. And here's another one. Here we go. This one's a little more centered. I like that. Let's crop her in a little bit so we get Greg. Um, I don't know who. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for joining, Freddie. Hopefully, I answered your questions a little bit. Um, if I forget, feel free to send me a message on one of the multiple platforms I'm on. I would absolutely not mind doing, like I said before, I'll do a video as you know best I can in my ability about what it's like to be on YouTube now. Um, but it might be you know a little bit different for someone who's you know had a channel and just you know existing on YouTube now versus someone who's starting you know fresh off the blocks. But thank you for joining the live stream. Really appreciate you having or appreciate you being here. And I'll try and get uh, hopefully that video out pretty soon since I have a little bit more time on my hands now. Um, not having to go into work as often, but still every now and then. Let's see what we can do to make this image look cool. I think I just got to crank up the shadows. If I'm not mistaken, this was on the D5. This was definitely a 14 mil. Yeah, I think this was the D5. Let's play with some lens corrections. Not bad, not bad, not bad. But um, I for sure, I'm going to bring some of that vignetting back because, I mean, even if I'm not adding my own later on, you know, an image just naturally you know, I think needs to get darker on the edges. I throw vignettes on, even if it's so subtle, you can't hardly see it. I throw vignettes on like all of my images just because your eye is naturally going towards, you know, this center point right here. And when you have a completely, you know, flat, ungradiated image all the way across, it's super difficult to, um, sorry, just looking at my channel stats and fun things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm not sick, I promise. Um, yeah, when you have a super flat image all the way across, it just it, it doesn't work. It doesn't, you know, it messes with your composition. And um, I'm going to come back to this image. This is going to be a difficult one to edit. Oh, man. Not only because I'm tired, but I'm also play with the white balance a little bit, cool it down bring some of those magentas in but it's going to be hard because i'm shooting into the sun and this very easily i don't know could this be a Ooh, that looks cool okay so i just did that on accident and i was literally saying the sentence could this be a silhouette let's try minus one yeah okay so it turns out i was uh I mean, this is what you learn by just, you know, messing around with sliders. And hopefully, hopefully everyone didn't leave. Um, um, apparently, I might have, you know, two viewers. Hopefully, you guys are um, just here hanging out. Um, this is just one of those things where you're playing with a slider and something just works. Like, let's turn down. And I'm going to cool down this image a little bit. Let's see if 6,500 Kelvin works. Yeah, I like that. Here we go. I'm getting motivated again. No, 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 no. That was minus. 
1.5. Boom, there we go. There we go, this is looking much better. So my issue, I was just, I was over cranking this image, you know, up when I needed to be bringing it down. Um, so now, yeah, I can play with a touch of clarity. The problem is I need I need negative dehaze and I need positive dehaze. You see what I'm saying? I want to bring out that sunset and some of these details, but I also this is gonna be fun. Maybe I leave dehaze alone. See it's all about experimentation. I know I keep preaching that and I say it over and over again to you guys. Um but especially in Lightroom, it is all about, you know, that's why I love slider-based editing. Um, you slide something one way until it breaks, so you slide it the other way until you, you know, you unbreak it, you fix it. So this looks good. So now I'm in the same scenario where I love the sunset, but I need to work on the aircraft. So I'm going to bring down the dehaze. I'm going to go into the negative with it. So I bring out some of my shadows, just a touch. I don't want to do it too much because my shadows are a little bit noisy. So I'm thinking, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to think out loud and give you guys kind of the process that I'm going through in my head as I do this. So maybe, just maybe, we'll play with our tone curve a little bit. And we'll see what happens. Let's play with some bright spots, some dark spots. Because I want, and this is all a game. Oh boy, I broke it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, it's, you know, a giant game of getting my highlights where I want my highlights, my shadows where I want my shadows, and it's just, you know, it's a matter of tweaking, and like I said, I'm trying to get you guys kind of in my mindset at least, as I play around, and I, essentially what we did, we just threw an S-curve on this thing when it comes down to it, that is all we did. Um, hmm. I'm really killing my shadows and I don't want to do that as much as I am uh, this is oh man it's difficult um, let's turn the tone curve off and then on again I like it again I like where my sunset is I just I need to work on the aircraft now maybe I turn down my contrast a bit maybe that was too much um man oh man minus one that's a little bit better because i do i do want that contrast it's just a matter of how much contrast and again it's all a big game so we've come a little ways there was our before, there's our after, before, after. That looks pretty good. And I have a couple different iterations where I tried a couple different um, different exposures. So again, there's turning our highlights all the way down, you know, turning our shadows basically all the way up, adding some contrast, and then really getting into it with yeah, I love that. You know what? I just noticed, you know, there's a jet flying in the air. I think this is a C5. Um, it's super difficult for me to tell what it is. I think that is a C5, Boeing C5, um, or possibly a C17. Actually, more likely a C17. Um, but let's play with, let's get funky with our colors right now. Adobe Portrait. Neutral sometimes looks good landscape is rocking there we go trap our purples 
play with our sunset colors a little bit, bump those whites and blacks, add a touch of clarity. Let's see which way we decide to go with our dehaze. Uh, that way looks good. Turn down that exposure a hint. Oh man. I apologize. Once again, my phone is blowing up. And in a couple minutes, I might do a little bit of a coffee break. Um, if you guys need to take a coffee break just for a couple minutes. Um, and I will just essentially, you know, warm up my coffee, which my coffee is getting a little bit cold. But, you know, I can, I have no problem editing for another hour or two. So, um, we can leave this live stream going as long as you guys are awake and as long as I'm awake. Or, you know, if I fall asleep, you can just, you know, stare at my head on my keyboard. But I do need to warm my coffee up. So let's actually do that. Let's take a quick intermission. Um, it looks like we do still have a couple people here. So um, let's do that. Let's take, um, you want to guys... Um, if you guys are still here, feel free again um, to drop some comments in the live chat. But we're just going to take a couple minutes, uh, three, four minutes, and um, just warm up your coffee, stuff like that. So I am going to uh, shut off my video for just a couple minutes. And it's 11 o'clock my time. So I'm going to be back in like two, three minutes. I'll be back on the hour, whatever it is your time. Um, again, just going to warm up that coffee, and we will be back and jump right back into editing. I will be right back in just a minute.
All right, I am back right now. I just got back. I'm actually going to turn off this light here in my eyeballs. Um, this light I had over here, you guys can see um, a little bit of a light so you can see my face, but I'm actually going to turn my face light off just because it's kind of actually I'm going to tilt it a little bit. Let's see if I can turn the light down instead of completely turning it off. There we go. So I think now you guys can hopefully see me. Let's see if that works without me being blinded. All right, I think that's a little bit better. You can still see what I'm doing here, which isn't much other than talking. Um, and so, yeah, we just had, if anybody new is here, we just had a little bit of an intermission. Um, and we will get back to the photo editing. So just give me a minute or two. I'm just gonna check, you know, the good old Twitters and stuff like that. And just say like, hey, we are still live streaming. You know, if anybody was curious about joining the live stream and they haven't yet, I will just um, give the opportunity to, um, you know, other folks that might wanna join up um, on our live stream. So. I'm just going to post a quick photo here. Take a quick old screenshot um, and share our fun little live stream that we got going on here. Oh, excuse me. Um, coffee, for some reason, just gives me um, massive heartburn for some reason. Uh, let's see. Give me just a second. I'm trying to find our our live stream link, which I just, you know, silly me, just lost it. Um, I said, I hope there are a couple people that are still in here um, hanging out. Glad to have you guys, you know, in general, I'm glad to have you guys here. Um, oh, no, don't freeze, don't freeze. Just kind of checking out our links, making sure you know the live stream is still working. Um, hopefully we don't get any crazy feedback. Um, let's see. It looks like, all right. Yeah, it looks like everything is still working. Just double checking all that good stuff. Um, there we go. So I'm just making a little tweet on Twitter, letting everybody know. Um, that our live stream is still happening. Still streaming. Just made a quick, uh, quick little Twitter post. Gotta love Twitter. And then um, maybe I will add. Let's see. Just making sure audio is working. Good. Um, maybe I'll add a little Discord post. See if anybody would like to drop into the live stream. Um, So let's close that out. Let's get back into um, maybe I can search on the Reddits and see if there's anybody uh, anybody there that wants to join. I don't want to keep you guys waiting if you are, um, I mean, you're actually in the live stream. I appreciate everybody that's hanging out here just trying to get a, um, get a nice audience going on here. Um, what is this garbage? Reddit has some weird, weird stuff. Um, what 
weird, weird stuff. Um, so there's not too many places that I can really post this. Yeah, I will, um, let's see, where can I post? Oh, well, I will, uh, I will just move on. We will get back to the live stream here. Um, I'm going to open up Lightroom again. Sweet. We got four people hanging out with us right now. Um, and again, I'll say it uh, just to remind you guys at any point, if you want to, um, you know, just drop any questions, they can be, you know, life related. They can be photography related, you know, anything. Obviously, I can, you know, probably help you out with photography questions more than, you know, questions about life. I don't have the answers to life, but I might have the answers to your photography related questions. So um, we will get back into Lightroom here. Um, we're a little over halfway. Um, maybe, let's see. We're basically done with these sunset edits, I think. Um, we have a couple more edits I have in mind. Actually, did I share my, let me get back to sharing my uh, my screen with Lightroom. I think you guys would enjoy that a lot more than seeing just this random blank screen. So let's transition here over to Lightroom. Hopefully that's working for you guys. And before we left for the break, um, before we left for intermission, and I just realized I should probably make like a little intermission screen so that if anybody joins the live stream and we're at an intermission, they don't just, you know, bail out and think that the live stream crashed. So what we were doing, we were editing these sunset uh, bomber photos. Um, let's see. Hmm. Just kind of thinking. I really like the composition of this photo. Um, we're definitely a little bit brighter. It was a bright, bright foggy day. Um, let me turn down our highlights a touch. And some contrast. Boom. Boom. It's always a fun, you know, experience. It's like an experiment with every image, you know, a mixture of contrast and a mixture of dynamic range. And it's like, what is the right mixture of bringing up my shadows but crushing, you know, the black values or bringing down the highlights but upping the whites and bringing up the contrast and then playing with exposure. It's always a fun, oh man, kind of a game. Oh, excuse me. It's always kind of a game or a back and forth, I guess, of, um, you know, like spreading out your his histogram and then crushing it back down, you know, taking the widest possible dynamic range you can, you know, get out of a camera and then, you know, crunching that contrast as much as possible. Um, this image is pretty contrasty. Again, there's our before, there's our after. I didn't have to do too much to it. Um might look cool in black and white and it does i actually prefer that in black and white the color just doesn't add anything to the story and then there's also you know brake lights going on back there there's some green trees there's you know lights from the tail or excuse me the wing of another bomber right there it's just it doesn't add anything and it subtracts honestly from the photo and it takes away from this bomber that I'm really trying to, you know, get everybody's attention to. So honestly, I think and that is okay as a photo. The composition's decent. Let's check out a couple more of, this was another kind of interesting composition I was playing with. It's so, oh, oh, excuse me, I apologize for all the yawning. Um, I didn't sleep that well last night, so I'm super excited for a really good night's sleep tonight. Hopefully, all this coffee I've been chugging will let me sleep. Um, kind of like a line of condensation right there. That's kind of neat. A little bit of frost, maybe. Um, let's see. Black and white versus color. This is going to be a tough one. I'm going to do some editing to this. And we are going to find out in just a minute whether we want to go black and white or color. So... 
And let's add a touch of texture. I really want to bring out the texture in the nose. Very hint of clarity and a hint. Let's see which way. Yeah, a hint of dehaze just to bring out. I mean, it doesn't matter if, you know, you're taking a photo of something a mile away or 10 feet away. There is always some level of atmosphere between, you know, the front of your camera lens and whatever it is, you know, it'll be obviously it's different, but um, there's always a bit of atmosphere. It's just going to be more or less depending on how far away from you, how far away your subject is from the front of your camera lens. So, oh yeah, it was raining that day, wasn't it? So some of the noise here might actually just be rain. So there's black and white. And there is color, and here is before, and here is after. So contrast looks pretty good. I think that's on point. Um, let's see. Whoops. Accidentally closed down Lightroom. Um, we'll do a little bit of sharpening real quick. Our focus is kind of right there in the windows in the middle. Add some sharpening. Just a tiny, tiny bit of noise reduction because it was getting a little bit noisy in kind of these flat areas. And flat areas of your image are really where you're going to see noise. But that looks good. There's a little bit of grain in there, but that looks good. There's some texture. Excuse me, and I'm okay with texture. Oh, man. I just I keep yawning because I'm talking so much I keep forgetting to breathe. So that is, that is my struggle. Hmm. I, re I really, I really enjoy the black and white of this, to be honest. Because color, you know, the aircraft's kind of blue. And there's a red warning symbol right here. The windows kind of have this polarized purple, blue, green, reddishness going on there. There's some orange around the windows, but... It's not, it's not adding anything, and I like the more, I think I like the more abstract feel of a black and white photo. I, I think I'm going to go for black and white on this one, and let's go on, let's move on to this next image here, which I actually, I'm curious to see what it looks like in black and white. Ooh, that is menacing. And what's cool about this image, and I was doing this earlier, if you chop this image in half, it looks like a UFO. Uh, let's see. Really crop this guy in to like right there. Like it looks like you're staring. I'll crop it in even more. I was playing with this when I was making my thumbnail earlier of like just cropping this image into here. And it's like, that looks like a rounded dome of like the top of a UFO. And it's kind of creepy. A um, little eerie, but... I will undo everything I just did, um, but I do want to crop quite a bit in. There we go. I straightened it out, took off some of those edges. That is just a dead-on close-up, and this photo is all about the texture, and that's what I love about it. And that's one of the chances, or one of the times, you know, black and white's great, but there's also something about the contrast between the bright whites, this lack of color, and then these super saturated green windows. And if you ever notice that windows kind of turn different colors when there's raindrops on them. Um, just an interesting property of glass, I guess. Um, but with these raindrops around the windows, um, there's just a very weird um, kind of green tint to the windows that isn't there all the time. And Let's warm this image up just a touch. Really bring out that green. I was just playing around with some, you know, white balance uh, there to see if that would make any difference in whether, um, heck, whether, you know, too much green, not enough green. And I'm actually going to bring up the texture of this guy a bit. I don't want to do it too much because remember, this whole presence, you know, three sliders, texture, clarity, dehaze, you got to be careful. Again, you know, making everything in your image super sharp, 
and that's great but remember you're going to make your grain super sharp you're going to make everything that you know is out of focus super sharp which you know super sharp out of focus areas and blur just turns into grainy grainy areas so um air force u.s air force b52 that's kind of cool serial number 6012 um so again just playing around here between black and white that looks pretty neat if this image were in black and white i'd bring up my whites a touch right about there and it's going to look good in color as well dang there we go that's where the contrast needs to be um something i like to do is edit my contrast in black and white and then you turn it back whoops now i turn it back to color and you notice contrast on point it is perfect so i'll edit my contrast and play with all of my you know highlights shadows whites blacks texture clarity dehaze all that fun stuff in black and white and it basically it gets rid of the distraction of all the colors that's the best way i can describe it um sorry just checking out fun live stream stats and stuff like that making sure you know nothing has crashed yet um always good to make sure nothing has crashed so um for those of you still watching hopefully everything is working for you in the live stream um and again, I will just keep ranting on about my photos and talking some gibberish. Um, unless you guys have any questions, I'll just kind of keep going on with this and telling you my little stories and fun things like that. I'm actually going to close this tab up here so I have more room to work. Um, and you can do that in Lightroom. Kind of just clean up your workspace by either adding or subtracting these little triangles. They're a little drop down and drop left and drop right, stuff like that. Um, so that looks pretty good. And again, I do my contrast editing in black and white. And then when I'm done doing that, and it looks good. I'll add my color back. And the color's on point. <laughs> yeah, the color looks great. Super happy with that. I will actually go ahead and sync those settings and share those settings on over in the next couple images I'm going to take a look at because they're very similar, you know, taken within five or ten minutes of each other. So very similar um, lighting settings, conditions, whatever you want to call them. Do some a little bit of cropping, some straightening. Right, right about there. Froze up for a second. I am getting hungry. I don't know about you guys. And um, so there's the straightened image. Now, the issue I have with verticals, um, two by three is just an extremely, extremely tall vertical image. And that gets, I don't want to say difficult to look at, but there's a lot going on up and down. And I usually try and flatten vertical images out a little bit, you know, four by three, 4x5 might be a little bit too much, but definitely 5x7 would look good. Let's try that. That's a little bit better. And I might even bring the bottom up just above those radar. There we go. And then the more I crop, I can tell it was a little crooked and off-center. Right there-ish. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. Let me bring down the exposure of this a little bit because we're starting to lose the clouds. There we go. Look at that. Just bringing all that, I don't want to call it detail, but texture and tone. I think tone is the word I'm looking for. Bring that tone back into the clouds. Bringing those shadows down. Turn the blacks down a touch. And then if we add a nice vignette to that, that'll look real nice. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit off of this edge. There we go. It's a little more centered. Let's see. What else can we do? Let's add that vignette. Let me add some split toning. Let's see what we can do here. 
Maybe some bluish. Yeah, bluish to the shadow. Maybe we warm up the clouds a little bit. Eh, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that at all. And I don't want to add blue to the clouds because at that point, all I need to do is just change my white balance. Now that bluish tint I think looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Actually, I do like that. And let's see what black and white would look like. Looks good. Um, <sighs> hmm. Yeah, I want I want my shadows to be more blue than anything. Um, I don't necessarily want the highlights to be blue. I think that looks pretty good right there. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I am going to yawn again, though. Oh, man. <sighs> I am sorry that I am such a boring individual on a Sunday night. Yeah, there we go. Let's make this look really gritty like the O.J. Simpson cover of Time Magazine. Let's feather that out. Again, I like to add a lot of vignette, and then I will bring it back later. All right, so let's bring it back now. There we go. We just need a touch. There's our before. There's our after. That is a huge difference. I'm digging that. I don't know what you guys think. Feel free to let me know what you think. If you love it, if you hate it, if it's great, if it sucks, let me know. Um over here in the uh, the live chat um, just letting people know that we are back in case they are um, not listening or not paying attention just saying we're back in the live chat so that looks good I'm actually going to sync that up with this photo right here Hit synchronize see how that looks And as soon as it loads, oh yeah, that looks good. Um, I'm gonna do some minor cropping on this, but I'm very, very happy with the way that looks. Um, I'm just gonna bring, you can see these are the doors for the landing gear right here, they flip up. I'm gonna get rid of those because they're more distracting than anything. There we go. I like that. Let me know what you think about that one. Um, before after before after it just it goes from being a flat soft dull image to like this plane is going to kick your ass and then here can't even see the pilots to boom now i can see i'm going to do a little bit of noise reduction on here it got a little bit noisy with all of the you know cranking all the settings but that looks that looks badass. That is cool. Super, super happy with the way that turned out. Let's move on. We're like 75% of the way through our photos, I think. Or at least like 60%. Um, maybe if you guys get super bored, um, we don't have to go through all of these tonight. Um, we can, you know, if we want to take a look at some more of these in a different live stream, we can absolutely do that. But... I'm going to edit for, I think, another about 30 minutes. I think I can survive that. Um, I have these double exposures that I really want to mess with um, that I think turned out pretty neat. I think I can see myself. No, nope, that's not me. That is somebody else. Interesting. Okay. Um, that's weird that I'm not showing up. Because I don't think that's me. Huh. Maybe I'm over here in this other reflection. It's just interesting that I'm not in that reflection. So we have a double exposure here. Um, and let's actually, let's see what we have. Let's just take a look at some of our, oh, excuse me. Whew. Let's take a look at some of our other photos we have here. Um, let's pick one. We'll do one double exposure. I think I had two of them. Yeah, here's another one. And there's the other. 
Yep, I like this one better. You can see my first exposure was taken right at sunset, and then my next exposure was taken right after the sun went down um, with the pilot and his aircraft. So I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Let's edit one double exposure, and let's edit one of these nighttime long exposures, and then I'm not sure why I threw this. This was just a random photo of my boots. Um, I don't know why I threw this in here, but maybe we'll edit this. Let's do, yeah, let's do a long exposure and let's do a double exposure and then let's, let's call it good for the night. Um, I think this was a pretty good live stream, but let's go through these, talk about these photos a little bit. Um, again, if I'm not mistaken, um, I brought two cameras on this deployment. I think it was a D810 and a D9, or sorry, a D5. Um, I for sure brought the D5 and I think the 810 was my secondary camera, but I'm pretty sure, pretty sure these were on the D5. If anybody is really that concerned about what camera I used, I have no problem, you know, going back in the metadata and looking that up. Um, I just don't think it's that important necessarily for this live stream in particular. Um, I really like the way the composition turned out with this. Um, you can see here, I had to crop a little bit of that engine over there, so I'm gonna do the same thing to this side, just so it is symmetrical. Because if you have an image that looks that symmetrical, but it's not where I crop all of this image and you can still see this whole wing over here, that's not good, that's not fun. Like if you have the opportunity to show off some symmetry, and balance those images out. I definitely uh, would recommend you do that depending on your image and depending on what you like to do. So uh, this image is pretty busy, but hmm, I think if I go black and white, I think it's gonna be more busy and more difficult to read. Oh, it's hard because you have multiple things going on in the center of this image just makes it difficult to read um, but color kind of separates it you can see the difference between sky and ground and head and shoulders <sighs> so sometimes I just sit here and you know I'll stare for a couple minutes at an image and just you know kind of wonder what exactly I should do maybe we'll come back to this one let's take a look at some of these long exposures that's just tilted like crazy I don't know what I was using as a tripod. That one is a straight horizon. That one's close. That one's all sorts of messed up. Ooh, I like the angle of this. That's gonna be different just because of the angle. Um, and then that one looks pretty good. Let's play with this one. I just, I like the angle. I like the super low angle of this, you know, looking up and it feels very dynamic. Again, I'm gonna crop wide, 16 by nine. I'll bring this edge in a touch. That composition, and yeah, we'll play with it a little bit. Boom, that composition looks pretty good. Um, get a nice neutral color profile to start editing with. Um, ooh. You can see if I bring up the shadows, you can see some of the haze. You can see the tail back there, which is pretty neat. Pretty, pretty cool. See, so again, we can play with our clarity, but then we're bringing a bunch of grain out. And same thing with texture. That looks kind of gross. The dehaze looks all right. If I, you know, throw the inverse, you can start seeing some of the... Um, fog that was around the jet but that looks good again there's before and after we're just bringing out a touch of detail on the side I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of noise reduction Ooh, black and white looks really cool um, I'm gonna have to do a bit of noise reduction on this particular photo um, this actually may have been shot on my 810 um, it just looks really noisy 
I'm just trying to balance this image out a little bit. I might have to go two to one. Let's see. Um, yeah, two to one looks a little bit better. It's super wide. You can actually see one of the other photographers down here in the corner. Let's see if you can see him. Yep. See a photographer over there. You can also see this image is getting very noisy when I zoom in. So uh, this must have been my 810. This is just really ridiculously noisy. I hate turning up my um my noise reduction that much up to 30 but you know sometimes you don't have the choice geez i might have to go higher up to 40 and then turn the masking on for my sharpening i have to turn that way down dang all right let's see what that looks like still a little noisy uh, let's see where my contrast is at. And let's bring down these black values. That'll get rid of some of our noise. You can hide it a little bit. It'll cool the image down. That looks pretty good. I was going to say it looks pretty cool. Um, and then before and after. There's not much I can really do with this image. Only because... I mean nighttime like long exposures there is really you know only so much you can do you can add a bit of contrast but there's such a lack of detail in these like dark dark shadows not much i can do with it i'm going to sync these two photos synchronize yep and let's work on um let's work on this other image a little bit see what we can get out of it um i do have yeah it looks like i did a little bit better job exposing this image. Um, shadows up. Yep, yep, yep. That is pretty close to what I need. I'm going to crop this in, I think, to a 16 by 9. That looks good. That is not too shabby. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think that looks pretty darn good. I am happy with the way that one turned out. Um... Yeah, I'm not going to complain about that one. I'm going to grab a sip of coffee and celebrate because I just, you know, copy and pasted the settings and it just kind of happened to work out. Which sometimes that works and sometimes that is awesome. And sometimes that does not, you know, work out at all. I'm just checking the health of the live stream right now, making sure everything is still working okay. Um, I think it is. Um, hopefully someone can tell me, you know, if um, if the stream crashes. But I guess there would be no way to tell me, would there? Um, here's a little photo I took of my boots. I liked it for some reason. Got all sorts of junk. I got some grease on my boots, stuff like that. But I was just playing with, you know, the contrast of it. Trying to make this look kind of gloomy like it did when I was actually there. Yeah, a touch of clarity, a little bit of dehaze, and then we'll play around with our different colors. Usually what I'm trying to do, that actually black and white fits this fairly well. Um, but I just, I remember taking this photo. It was rainy, it was cold. I was cold, my boots were wet, my socks were soaked, my feet were cold, and you can see my boots were soaked here. Um, and even with my uniform, it's kind of hard to tell. My uniform was soaked, my camo, but um, yeah, maybe I'll really crank these colors, that looks good. And if I really want to get funky, I can go in the tone curve, set up some points here, and then just lift those shadows, whoops. Let's actually lift these guys. Give it kind of a moody vibe. There's our before and our after. Just a completely different image. Um, it's actually crushed down. I don't want to lose the detail in that puddle. I think that's important kind of the story that I was standing in a puddle. You know, let's go with pure black on that one. I think that looks pretty good. 
Um, now you can really see the detail on the uniform, everything else, monochrome. Yep, that looks good. Looks good. Let me bring out some of the shadow detail a touch. Some of those highlights. Turn down the highlights, bring up the whites. I think that looks pretty good. I am um, I am not displeased uh, with how that turned out. And again, here's our uh, before. It's going to load before. Very flat, very soft, and after contrasty and punchy. I really like the way that turned out. Um, yeah, that is about it. Um, I think, you know, in about 20 minutes, 10, 20 minutes, maybe 15, maybe 10, um, I think most of everyone has kind of left the live stream pretty much for the most part. Um, and we've gone through, we've edited most of these photos. Um, I don't want to stream for too long, you know, don't want to bore people, but I definitely, I had quite a bit of fun and it was fun kind of having that nostalgia and going back and, you know, putting my brain and my state of mind back to where I was two and a half, I guess two and a quarter years ago, two years ago, um, back in England. I really miss it. Um, really, really would love to go back. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun. I think, let me see something real quick. Yeah, there was a little bit of a, it's kind of a stream of water that was coming off of these engines. Looked kind of cool, it was just like back there. Um, looked kind of neat. <clears throat> Sometimes it happens with jets. You can see these swirls that go back and forth behind the engines when it's raining or when it's super foggy and there's a lot of moisture in the air. But I just thought was that was really neat. Um, just noticed that in that image, actually. Um, never really noticed that before. I'm curious to know if it's in... Uh, this shot too. You can't see it in this one. Oh, probably because they're cutting the power of the engines. <sighs> but I think, um, I think that my body is trying to tell me right now to go to sleep. So I think now would probably be a great time to um, think cut the live stream. Um, I really enjoyed having you guys. If you're new here. Um, or, you know, I don't know who you are, you know, feel free, drop who you are in the live chat in the next couple minutes. Um, whoever you are, I appreciate you guys coming out. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, you know, edits like this. I'm trying to do, you know, a live stream once a week and then, you know, a produced, you know, production tips and tricks video once a week as well. So that is the goal. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and I'll do these as often as I can and as often as you want to watch as long as you guys are enjoying it. So that is all for this video. I really enjoyed having everyone here. I have a blast doing these little live stream edits and talking to everybody as we go. And I think there's a lot of fun. I think, I think this is one of my favorite edits from tonight. Um, it's just kind of an unexpected photo. I didn't expect it to turn out. And again, the before was very, very dull. And then we were able to like really extract that color out of there. And you know what? I'll even push it even more. I like that even better. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with you guys tonight. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Maybe as soon as, you know, this coming Friday. Um, maybe Thursday, maybe Friday. Maybe we will try out some different, um, you know, different live stream times. I'm um, trying to be inclusive as I can with everybody you know, in all different parts of the world, it's just easier for me to stream um, in the evening, you know, for me, just because I'm off of work and stuff like that. So that is about it. I will wrap this video up. Again, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Love having you guys here. And I just do this as a, you know, fun way to kind of give back to the photo community. So subscribe, hit that like button if you enjoyed everything and all the shenanigans that we got into today. And, you know, please leave me a comment down below, whether you're new or whether, you know, you've been here for a while. Let me know what you really thought about the live stream. Um, give me tips, give me improvements, whatever I can do to make this more enjoyable for all of you guys out there. So I would absolutely appreciate, you know, those tips and tricks from you guys um, and little bits of knowledge of how you think um, 
how you think I could make this live stream better. So maybe I make them shorter, maybe I make them longer, maybe a different variety of images. Um, I have quite a few, as you can see, um, images from my military career. Um, there's nobody else on YouTube that's really doing that, and I think that just kind of sets me apart from the YouTubes, and that's why I kind of keep doing it. Um, just to be kind of a little bit different than, you know, everybody else that's out there. But if you guys want to see more portrait edits, um, architecture, landscape, concert, anything like that, I'm down to do it. Um, I just got to shoot it. Um, it just has to be something that I've shot, but I've shot a lot of things and I have hard drives full of every kind of image you can think of. So let me know. If you've made it this far, whether you're watching live or you're watching the playback of this, um, let me know what you want to see um, in future videos. And if I can make it happen, I will absolutely try my hardest to make it happen. Um, and as you guys know, I got some emails from some people in the live chat today. I'm actually going to go check those right now um, and try and answer those questions because... Um, yeah, I'm all about answering questions if I can. So I will see you guys soon. We did a live stream tonight because I wasn't able to get my video editing tips and tricks video out this weekend. It's just I want to do it right, and I didn't want to, you know, half-ass it and, you know, mess up that edit and go through it too quickly. So before I start yawning again, I hope you guys have a great night. I hope you enjoyed the live stream, and I will see you soon. Oh, excuse me. Yep. My body is telling me to go to sleep. So I'll see you soon. And until next time, get out and go shoot.